what you just described between you and Nota off 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 mic. Yeah. I was like that with him. One day I announced that I'll be joining Kai FM. Now you're gonna turn around and say that's what Mac gets for employing a fucking loser, a serial loser who can never be fucking trusted. I was like, damn, is that how you felt about me all the time? I'm the last person from the podcast family to block that guy. From my end, I don't I, I don't rate him and fuck no time. On culture. Penduka and Kaya fam. Then I said, maybe it's not that bad. Let me give it a listen. And my boy was being treated like a toddler. I'm talking about being treated like a kindergarten toddler. Disrespect all the way by Dine Oranak. Disrespect all the way. So Penduka cannot talk. He cannot ask a question. He has to raise his hand. Dine Oranak, let me give you a reality check. We all know that you have three baby daddies and we're not going to hold it against you. But so Penduga is not baby number four, nor is he baby daddy number four. You ought to treat that man with some respect because he is your co-worker. He's not your sidekick. He's not your buddy. He's not your pal. He is there to work. It's 50-50. It's not your show. It's not the Dineo Ranaka breakfast show. It's 50-50. Both of you are called by Kaya FM. And I can tell that Kaya FM didn't do their homework because Dineo Ranaka is the same person that tried to get Saul Penduka fired from podcast and chill. So Kaya FM didn't do their research. They didn't know. Yeah, Yo, you know, it's the first time I actually listened to this because I saw the, you know, sometimes when things happen, you really don't want to go into them, Yeah. right? Uh, you first want to let it simmer and then if you really want to go back and, but yeah, you, you had, interesting you played that. First time hearing it. I didn't watch the video. We had to Tom Foga Talk. Shout out to Sleek Talk. Yes, yeah, uh, the talk. <laughs> yeah, boy. Um, yeah, yeah, how do you respond to that? Uh, look to that and everything that's happening around you and your life now. Jeez, bro, you're re- saying this like it's a uh, around me and uh, my life. Uh, w- I w- could w- say, w- and daughter, like you like are trending. You I are know, trending. right? And I never trend. You know, it's always <laughs> Mac who trends. Um, firstly, it was a bit when I saw myself trend. I'm like, geez, why am I trending? And then I, I, I just, I'm like, oh gosh, I never trend. And the day I'm gonna trend, it's about you know allegedly being bullied or whatever um look i think a, a, lot, a lot of people are like south africa loves you know podcasts and chill and it comes from a place of concern i guess right but also you always feel like some other things are a bit it's like hey it's people just wanted to you know uh, uh, attack a dini um, but a lot of 90% of it comes from a place of concern. Yeah. Um, and 90% of it tells me that it's people who actually want the show to work. You know what I mean? Who want the show to be a, a success. It's a new show. Everything has been considered. All feedback is welcomed sure. about this and everything else. But like I always say, people must just give the show more time. And also, I mean, I've been off radio for a very a long time now. It's very different from podcasting. Dina has been on radio for a while, you know, but also having to work that time of the morning with this kind of a team on breakfast, it is something new for her as well. So we're all just learning and taking it all in. Um, a couple of things. Like the first one, they were like, I got sent to McDonald's. <laughs> Bro, guys, guys, that was a paid for thing. That thing was paid for. You know, it was literally the first day we got there, we made a couple of hundred thousands uh, for, 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 Kaya. for Kaya on the show, you know, because everybody was excited. It's a new show. And here's how it is, bro. It's like doing a show, it's like piloting a plane. There is a pilot, there's a co-pilot, right? And both are as important as one another. You get me? Yeah. The pilot might do some of the admin things. On radio, that's back announcing a song, forward announcing a song. You know what I mean? And then there's the meat of the actual show. And sometimes in a show, like the one example they had of these clips was with Courtney Ferguson. And sometimes there's maybe two hosts, me and Dineo, but due to the subject matter and who you're talking to, there might be more rapport between the two ladies. For sure. Especially when they talk about 
meeting Shauna or the relationship and they get deeper into it. Do you get me? But if we've got a Lewis Hamilton, for example, or a, a, a Junior Kanye, shout out to him, who comes to studio, of course the conversation will be, be more with will be more rapport with me. Yeah. Do you get me? So some of those clips were taken and now radio is... It, people are used to the podcast a lot and Mac has his own style of hosting versus maybe a, a Dinell. But then again, that was an interview moment they showed. They showed, and in, in our interviews, it's normally, if you notice in the interviews, it's Mac who speaks a lot. Yeah. Do you get me? Because you also don't want to disturb that thing, you know, when the person is zoned in and we've managed to bring them into that comfort space yeah. and Mac is their focal point, you know? So people always ask, hey, how come Saul doesn't say a lot? Do you get me? And even when I do need to say a lot, I signal to Mac. Yeah. That I, I was okay. saying that it's just to cut you, sorry. Uh, being a radio practitioner, practitioner myself, I was saying that to my my guys. I said, "Look, there are moments in radio. I used to work with uh, Mark Fish, Matlangu, and we used to interview the same people, three of us in one show. Yes, and you, you have to do those signals. It can get very messy, right? Yeah. You don't want to sound like you're speaking over one another. You don't want to sound like you know. And sometimes, I, one thing I, I don't like, like you know, the kind of radio I don't enjoy is when there's two hosts and you listen to a link and you're like. Well, you, you both didn't need to speak, you know, especially sometimes because they do this. One is going to back announce this song. The next one is going to back announce the next song. The next one, I'm like, God, it's just back announcing. It's, it's lousy. It's just lousy. It's yeah. like, it's petty also. Like, oh, I must speak. You need to speak to get me. So, yeah. yeah. But when it comes to really meaty subjects, things we're talking about, it's, 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 a, it's a team sport, you know? Um, but like I said, it's a new show. Let's give it time. Yeah. I'm telling you now, and also the, a lot of the clips people were showing was our first week there. The show sounds totally different now as opposed to it did first week. We just begun the uh, the second month. So, mm. yeah, give it towards the end of the month. You know what I mean? Uh, but we appreciate the fact that people are actually listening yeah. and the fact that people actually care because even if the clips were taken out there and distributed and people didn't feel strongly about it, they wouldn't say much, you know, which then you worry. Do people even give a shit about what we're doing? So how is the dynamic between yourself and Dino? Besides the bullshit, um, how is that dynamic? Are you working well together? Um, What's your game plan going into every show? How do you handle that? Do you speak about it? Um, Handle what? An hour before, like I'm saying. Um, so in radio, yeah. you have to look at the script before the show, an yes. hour before the show. The, yeah, the, the, uh, do you have those conversations to say, yeah, yeah, to prepare for the show? So do you have those conversations and you feel like you get your say as well and in, in your input as well in the planning of the show? Look, the producer does the show, um, Obviously. content producer, yeah. sends the prep a night before. We all have a look at the prep. Normally, because I like sleeping early, normally I'd look at the prep, I'd get to work at around quarter past five, look at it, all right? Um, we do discuss. We don't discuss to the T. We don't discuss links, yeah, because you really want it to be as natural as possible. Yeah. But all of us going into, into a link with a, a, a goal to say, okay, this link, want to open up this subject. This link, we're all going to throw in our two cents, um, you know, uh, how we relate to this subject. But nah, man, there's no... I think it's boring for it to sit down and plan the show. Or maybe I'm not getting your question properly. Like... Yeah. Now, look, there, there are elements to it. Now, there's a content producer, as always, on yes, radio. Yes, yes. Um, but there is a... Particularly when there's an elephant in the room, there, there should be a, a point where... We, oh, we, yes. We, we, we converse about it. We say, look, this is how we can improve the dynamic. This is where these are your strong points. Whatever I get your point about wanting to be organic, and Nami, I'm organic. Oh, no, yeah, that's but. what I asked initially. I was saying, with what happening with this thing happening right now. Yes, we've touched on that. And if you listen, right? Because, like I said, it's a new show. It's an unfamiliar territory. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, for for for. For me, in a long time, because it's not like podcasting. Yeah. Um, a new s- space altogether for Dineo, as far as the company, a new show altogether. The pace is different. A lot is different. Yeah. A lot more and different things are required from her as opposed to when she was on Metro, yeah. for example. So we are tweaking that, you know, because 
sometimes as much as you look at the con uh, at stuff that is being said a lot of it is malicious and unnecessary a lot of it is like okay that's got nothing to do with anything but there is some stuff you know some nuggets that you can take and yeah bro we've definitely tweaked a couple of things and like i said naturally so we would have tweaked them without yeah. the twitter thing that happened because of you listen to a show after a month after two months i mean even our our, 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 our the people who employed us haven't even said okay guys let's look at the show let's do this this feature is not working because it's too soon yeah the game it's too soon for yeah. all of that and you shouldn't panic and do that prematurely because of the 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 noise out there, yeah. you get me? Stick to your plan. Um, and so we're still going to get to even that moment where we all sit down. Okay, we've done two months or three months. Boom. Oh, this is working. Oh, that mm. feature's not working. This dynamic is not working. Let's tweak it. Let's mm. do this. Let's do that. Yeah, there's a machine with podcast and, sh and chill uh, as it relates to the followers. The fans can protect you against anyone who's trying to cancel you. They yeah, love definitely. you, um, but that machine as well can work against you. And I was saying this as I was discussing your dynamic in that you, you, you could be looking at this as nothing, absolutely nothing, as you were explaining the dynamic within the interviews, but then your fans seize it and they overreact react to it. And now there's a situation that you need to address, which isn't a situation. Um, well, how do you feel about yes. that? The involvement of people um, who love you, but now you literally have a situation. Like, like It's nothing, but now... Because I, I can imagine with Dineo, um, her family, her support structure, her own fans as well, may have a look at you as if you instigated this, but you have nothing to do with it. Oh, yes. Oh, no, it's very easy to do that. Yeah. It's very easy, especially these days with the, 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 the you know, paid Twitter, people paying people to tweet stuff yeah. for this one to trend. And it may be, but when that happened, I remember, you know, I, 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 I called Dineo. You know, straight up. And also, I'm the kind of person, bro, I'm a bullshit bullshitter. You know, like when I walk into a room and I've been lying to you, and you'll sense that. You know, something's off with Saul. Um, so, number one, someone tweeted me now, one of my mates, like, yo, South Africa loves you, right? And they tweeted yeah. one of those things. It's a blessing and a curse. Uh, uh, it is because, for me, it's like, like I said, it comes from a good place. Number one, not just because of podcasts and chill and Saul, but also... People clearly want the show to work. Um, and number two, it was it's something, if there was something wrong that was eventually going to get fixed. But then again, rolls are rolls, bro. You know? It is the the, the name and soul. It's like the Breakfast Club. Um the original, the, yeah. the, the real breakfast club. Right? <laughs> Which one? With Charlemagne. Morning, everybody. This is DJ NV Angela Ian Charlemagne, the God. And that's what you always hear, yeah. right? This is, it starts with, because he's the main anchor. And so people what, don't what, even know what's that. What's the situation there with you? Because uh, Slick Talk is saying you are 50 50. Of course, he doesn't know what's the situation yes. there. What's the situation? What's, uh, is she the main anchor and you are the co host uh, as it relates to the roles that needs to be uh, performed? Yes. She is the the, the, the main leader. anchor. Main, I'd like to call it main anchor. So it's not a 50-50. To get that out of the way, it's not we, your show and hers. No, it's my show and hers. Of course. No, no, like, no, no. no, no. Like, 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 it's DJ. It's, you can't say The Breakfast Club is DJ Envy's show. You know? Otherwise, it would be... Maybe I'm asking the wrong question. But yes. you, you know where I'm trying to get at. I don't know. If, you know, if 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 it's the wording, the wording is very important. If it's now, nah, Mina, when I talk to people, I just talk. I don't even write questions down. But no, no, we'll, which is we'll, good. We'll it's, get it's a to, conversation. We'll, we'll get to where we're going. Yeah. If the perception in the country is that that is fifty fifty, your guys' show, I'm trying to get you to explain that that is your understanding of the situation, or you are the supporter on that show. Because Angela, you, I'm both. I'm 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 the. Angela Yee reads the rumor report, right? Uh -huh. And you know uh, what Charlemagne does in interviews and, yes. and what it brings to interviews. Yes. And there's DJ Envy. Mm -hmm. Even if the He's the anchor. He does the back yeah, announcing yeah, yeah, and yeah. throw forward. Yeah. We're going to be talking to Ngulewa from Disky TV, cool, phenomenal broadcaster later on. He does that. that sure. Admin sure. Of, of, of it. Are we perceiving it wrong to think that that is not necessarily a three-way split of leadership? 
on the breakfast club it's not 33 percent 33 percent amongst the tree mm. like someone else someone from the dynamic is getting paid more to be the face of the show mm. although everyone else play their parts yes true okay let me i'm gonna answer i hate answering questions with a question right sure look at podcasts and chill now i said no we're talking don't worry look at podcasts and chill right we 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 and and ignore it's podcast and chill with Mac G because that tells you it's his show. Yeah. But when you watch or listen to the podcast, who's the main anchor there? It's Mac. Yeah. Whether it's interview or the normal show we do, right? Yet, I wouldn't say I'm playing a support role because my role is equally as important as his role if I kill my role. You get me? So he will navigate the conversation and where we're going, mm -hmm. just like on air. you probably a lot of times hear Dineo's voice last before going into a spot break. Or my voice, if I, I, I say something and we feel like the link is complete. Mm. Do you get me? It's not a, a set rule, you know? Or sometimes you won't hear her voice at all in a link, you know? Um, so she's the main, co the main anchor and I'm a co-anchor. Just like on Tato and Tato on YFM, Fresh and and and, and Tato, uh, forgot his surname now. Forgot his surname. It was the Tato and Tato show, mm. but Fresh was you the know, main yeah. anchor. You yeah. get me? And without the other one, you really find the show it's missing something and mm. not something small but big. And like I said, if you go back, for example, to the Breakfast Club, the first day they did that show versus now. A lot has changed. Yeah. And that's the nature of how it works. I'm not there, bro, just to read traffic. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I'm more than capable of doing a lot of things. You are the things. water boy, nigga. You know? Eh? Hey, you are the water boy, nigga. Yeah, imagine. I'm You're not there to, just, not to read traffic. Just <laughs> and to, buy McDonald's. And buy, oh, gosh. And just to buy McDonald's, right? And also, my nature, right? I'm not the... I'm not easily gassed up. You know, I'm I'm not the 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 the, the type of person who, because then it's it's a bad listening experience for the listener. For sure. Where now you can hear that ooh, Saul is now, and I get I get radio, I get you know radio as a craft how it should sound, and I'm always cognizant of that when I'm doing. Sure. That how is this sounding? You know what I mean? I don't just want to be the guy like yeah today I wanna ah I just speak unnecessarily just so that you can be heard. You know, and I think because of the nature of the podcast, Mac will just say something. And because of how the podcast is, I could go on a rant for 10 minutes without anyone disturbing me <laughs> because it allows that. The podcasting yeah. allows that. Radio, unfortunately. Every 15 minutes is an ad. Bro. Every 15 minutes is an ad. <laughs> there is news. There is headline. There is this. Traffic. You know what I mean? And sometimes I'm like, fuck, I really want to. But damn, we need to go into news because if. We don't go into news and I say my piece, it'll take two minutes. Yeah. Do you get me? So sometimes you need to, you have that mm -hmm. moment of restraint and the, the listener then goes, oh, who was all there? You know, but yeah. because of its radio, like, it's not as free formatted. I'm pretty sure if Dineo and I did a podcast, for example, the complexion would be very different, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't have those limits, but we're working within those limits. But as we record the show now, and if you've been following the show, you will hear that, you know, a lot has changed and things change. Not because of particularly the the, the, the Twitter uh, stuff, but because naturally that's where the show was going. Even the clips that were shown, they were from like week one, week two. Um, and to go back to your question, I appreciate because it, it, it comes from a good place. You know what I mean? It comes from a good place. It's just that sometimes I'm like, ish, but guy. I would, like, fi I, I would find that. it. I would find it annoying. You don't have I to know be... the the fans love blah 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 blah, but fans can get in the way of great shirts. Yeah, I would find it annoying. You know what it's Personally, like. Personally, I would find it annoying. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You know what it's like. It, part of it is because it's like that whole thing on Twitter, and we all do it. Everybody is with the Oscar Pistorius thing. Everybody was a lawyer. With the, 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 the courts of public opinion. Yes. With the, 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 the Kelly Kumala thing. Yeah. Everybody is an investigator. The sense of you were thing yep. with, you know what I mean? So like I said, before we even had feedback from 
the people who employed us who've been working on radio for 30, 20 years had said anything. People on radio were like, yo, this should be how the thing should be going. And f- people might just trust the process. Yeah, right, cool. Um, thank you for addressing that. Like a radio situation. legend called me and he was like, yo, bro, I'm seeing this thing happening. I'm like, yeah, it's like, yo, man, but people, it's quick. I've been on radio for 30 years and this is so, it's early stages. Yeah. However, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe you guys must look into, maybe there is validity in some of the things, you mm. know? So it's always like that though with Twitter, right? And you yeah. got to understand that, oh, today it's, it's my turn. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Thank you for addressing that shit. <laughs> like, cool. That's not the reason why I called you here because- we, I know. We, we've been we've been planning I'm to hoping talk. Hoping that's not the reason why. Well, when was the first time we spoke? Oh, actually, yes, you called me ages ago. So yeah, yeah so you've been you've been saying, been, yo, bro. I I, I, I I hate shit like this. Like, um, I me mean, now would berate my friends. I would tell them, "Fuck y'all, niggas, shut the fuck up." I'm trying to get bread here. That's that's my style. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had situations like that with Junior and people thinking that I'm bullying him. I'm like, yo, motherfucker, I'm probing this nigga. I'm probing his logic. Yes, you are hundreds of thousands of people wanting to hear him, but I need to probe him when he says something backwards. You know what I'm saying? And and you need to be careful not to allow that to interfere yeah. with the show. Yeah, and it, you know it, and, I mean? it, and it got to him, but he, he's, he was rebuilding at the point and he had been out of the spotlight for a very long time and it got to him. Got to him how? I'm like, yo, nigga, you know I love you. You know we're creating this thing to be big, but people were calling him. So I was calling him out on something very interesting. Um, he's criticizing players from a team that were not being paid, right? That was a situation. Um, there's a team called Chakuma Chamatsi Bandera. Yeah, I TTM, see that. It was, yeah, um, and team in they were not being paid. And they play Chiefs or Pirates. We cover that game. Hundreds of thousands of people watch us. And in one moment, he's criticizing the players. Is a Chakuma Chamatsi Bandera. And I'm like, yo, bro. What if I didn't pay you? Do you think you would come here motivated? And perform, yeah. And perform, yeah. yeah and yeah, that's a, yeah. for me, like in my world of intellect, that's a very straightforward question to ask. Yes. We would never not pay him, obviously. Yes. And we'll always treat people with respect. Yeah. But it got a lot of people talking um, because I kept on sticking on that because like, he went back to criticizing the players. And I'm like, yo, the question still remains. Do you think you would be happy if, if you got here and we didn't pay you? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that was it was a point about people not being paid. And we knew the players were not being paid. You know, mm. but that was like the one moment that stands. How out. did it get to him? You said it got it to got, him. It uh, got I'm getting there, like it got to him in a in a way that when we meet tomorrow, the greeting is not the same. Um, Ooh, you know. And are you serious? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, bro, like we were creating content. You know, we're creating content yeah, and I had yeah. to ask you about that. Yeah, and it took like yeah. two it took like two weeks. Maybe that was last year. It took like two weeks for him to come around and realize like, yo, that was nothing. But you can have your fan base uh, you know, <laughs> give you that 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 they pump you up to create a scenario that does that's not there. Yeah, I'm not easily gassed up, eh? Yeah. But I'm you not, used to it. Like, like not, I've been getting gassed up for, since the day I joined a uh, podcast. There you know you what go. I mean? There you go. You go to an interview, they're like, how does it feel you're holding the podcast on your back? Carrying nah. it on your back. <laughs> Ria, Ria. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm carrying the podcast on my rear. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do yeah. you feel about that? Like, how do you, oh, bro, you're the star? Or you get emails, man, I have to watch the podcast because of you. And it's very easy to get lost in that. You know, yeah. but you have to realize one thing that it's 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 a team effort and me being a broadcaster, people may not see it. Like on the Breakfast Club, maybe people may not see the role of Angela Yee there or the role of you know uh, uh, so I can't, I'm still checking it out. So I can't, like, Angela Yee. <laughs> I'm still I'm still looking for it. It's like food, uh, <laughs> and you'll find that it's E-E-E. Right close to you, you know, underneath yeah. your nose. But you won't get it. Uh, until, especially until in she, interviews. She's absent for a show. Uh, nah, but especially in interviews, it's like, it's almost the tri- trivial bullshit about dating or whatever. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a type of consumer. So it's like, if they talking to the Wu-Tang Clan, it's like, yo, just talk about the music. And you can ask about personal st- stuff. But now she always comes with something from sideways, which has nothing to do with what we're currently dealing with. You know, in radio, like there's almost a segment where even now, We've been dealing with the segment Yako no Dineo, right? For the first 20, 30 minutes. You can't just budge in with something that's unrelated in the middle of something important. Yeah, well. True. But clearly, it's it's well thought out that that's her... her like, <laughs> like, yo, it's an Angela. Don't come and act deep, you know? Don't ask, 
uh, uh, Capadonna uh, when he, he wrote Black Boy, what it was all about. You know what I mean? Be that dumb or, oh, I get or, or superficial I get the deliberate person nature in, stu- of in studio. Yeah, I get it. You know, now. some shows are like that where the girl there is like, she gets told, be that bimbo. <laughs> or Howard Stern would, you know, would have people like, be that pervert. That yeah, and, and, and or, or Robin is just laughing though yes, throughout, throughout Robin, the show. You know what I mean? So maybe that's her role as well. And it does, you know, bring a shade of, of color into everything. Sure. So when I think like that, I know very well, like, what Ghost Lady does, because we've done shows without her, they weren't the same. And if, for example, you bring somebody else to do the show and and not Mac, it won't be the same, even though I'm there. Yeah. And if you remove me and bring somebody else, or Mac does the show alone with Ghost Lady, it definitely won't be the same. You know, and that's how you know whether is it a one man show, even though there's three people, by pulling one out. Yeah. And if you pull one out and it doesn't feel the same, then trust me, everybody there has, you know, that value. They they bring some form of value. Last one on Kaya and yourself. You walked into a very difficult oh, situation. By the way, sorry, before you answer, sure. one thing people are forgetting, right? Sure. Is that me, I I won't take a gig to fuck it up. And Dinero also won't take a gig to fuck it up. We all want the show to work, you know? Mm. So no one goes there saying, I mean, who, who who does that? You know what I mean? Sabotages their own show. No one. So uh, people must also consider that mm. to get me. Like, we all want the show to work. So, uh, and also if addressing things, address things, don't be personal, you know? That's not nice, you know? Especially if you're going to do it in my name. Don't be personal. Don't slander someone personally. That's Because it's not something I would do. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm very sensitive. I care I about... Want, I, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, but I don't want spokespeople for my cause. Yes, you want the audiences because, of course, it gets you from one place to another and mm. they defend you when you need defending. But it's, mm. it's like, yo, don't be my spokesperson, bro, because you're creating scenarios for me that I don't want to deal with. But I want to mm. ask you about um, you walking into Kaya in a different difficult situation because... Skumba has a lot of fans and people like that show with mm. Thomas. Um, how yes. did you, when you when you guys replace them, um, do you interact with any negativity um, from fans who were off that previous show always. and shit like that? O- always. And, and by always, I don't that? mean it's still happening. It has quietened down, to be honest, to be really honest. But fortunately for me, I've been part of two breakfast shows, right? One, uh, um, Flavor in the Mornings on YFM. Myself, Mo Flavor, and many girls, because we changed so many, like Ross Kuto, Edda Rose, Ross Teko, um, and we took over after DJ Swoo. The other show was Fresh fresh on Five, Fresh at Five, uh, uh, myself, Fresh, Catherine, and the gang, and that show was after Gareth Cliff. Now, Gareth Cliff, DJ yo, Swoo, yo, yo. YFM, Gareth Cliff, 5 FM. Yeah. Do you get me where I'm going, right? Yeah. Ah, you suck! Ah, you shit! <laughs> Smooth people, hey, for tech, where's Karas? Where's Smoo? Where is Kova or whoever Smoo had? Thousand people in the studio, you know? They all, all us ask, hey, my father, Bantu. We want our people, we want our people. Yeah. And th- that's the nature of replacing a breakfast show. And also, what makes it worse with this Kumba and Thomas situation is because it takes a long time to build a breakfast show, you know? Um. So I think they were getting warm as far as the listeners already were building that rapport and that love with them, that camaraderie with them. Yeah. And they got yanked out, right? So do you know we if, are put do you know if it now was, with the face of people being deprived of Thomas and school. Yeah. Do you know if it was numbers related, the, the replacing situation? I'm not sure. I didn't want to delve too much into it. You know, because we were put there to do us and to do our own thing. Yeah, obviously. As obviously. you can see, it's Kumba, me. Very different guys, you know what I mean? Um, Thomas Dineo, very different. Of course, very different. You know, the texture of the show is extremely different. So I don't want to go to deep management knows, you know, why they 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 they, they decided to, 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 to shift them. Um, and they're still at Kai doing a great job. But we, we got that a lot. Like in the morning... First day, like, oh, I prefer, this is not working out. I prefer Skumba and Thomas. But every show on radio, especially the big shows, Breakfast or, or, or Drive, drive. no one loves the first show. Unless you are 
No one loves the first show who's a listener of the previous show. No one. And it takes it takes a while. And to be honest with you, it has really, I think, it, 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 the change has happened quicker than I expected it to, to happen. Because even now, the people who interact with, the people who call, it's a different person, you know? Um, so, yeah. I, it did happen. It still happens. But it's not a big thing, bro. It's yeah. not like a daily thing where like, oh gosh, they say we suck. But yeah, uh, people are warming up to the show. To be honest, I'm, over and above the, 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 this thing, it's really like people are really warming up to the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty curious. I, I've, I've, I've fallen in love with media um, and I'm obsessed with creating media spaces. Yeah. Um, although I'm giving up on radio a bit as a creator of that space because I see where um technology is going and yeah. I, i've proven over two youtube channels that yes, okay this yes. is a space um That's but i've thing, always yeah. been curious about south african audiences maybe it's a global thing that how long do they want shows to go on i get this kumba and thomas show and the, my point is not even about that i can understand that because i think they had replaced bob mabena it, it was not more than two or three years yes. if i'm not mistaken um but uh, niggas would, would, would go on almost a strike for a show that's been going on for 20 years. And me and I, as a progressive person, I'm 32 years old and I've seen my country Damn, changing. you're 32? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flip, bro, I thought you were older, man. Yeah, like I've Jeez, seen... Bro, you got a good head on your shoulders, man. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, I'm looking at my country changing. We worked at Soka Latuma with myself and Jason, the partner that I started It Disky TV with. Yeah. And we literally are fighting in that space. Soka Latuma had a monopoly on newspaper. And they were making millions per Footballing month. Footballing newspaper. Yeah, football, sorry. Fuck, yeah. Latuma was making millions. Yeah, they were making millions per month. And Jason oh, no, and I... Latuma. Oh, it's used. Um, it's News 24. It's under News 24 now. Okay. Uh, News 24 bought it for like maybe 100 million, um, if I'm not mistaken. And then Jason and I were able to infiltrate their space. With, we started with Itisky TV. And we went to Itisky Times, our newspaper. And we have a deal with ShopRite, right? Um, where our paper is distributed for free in Gauteng with ShopRite, right? Um, now, I'm, I'm saying that to say I've been observing media changes and, uh, whoa, whoa, you know what I'm saying? Up. And I observe my country and I'm like, I'm obsessed with the question of why is it that people expect 15-year, 10-year-old shows to go on and on forever? Um, why is there always a shock? Because it's happening even with, there's a show on Umtlobo Nene where there's a man who was doing a sermon every, every Sunday and people were protesting because he went to a community radio station and then he had to be dismissed because you can't work on radio twice. Uh, once you're on club and then you go to community radio station mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. you know, and he was removed. He created a scenario for himself. But my question was, that nigger, if he had to be replaced because he had been doing that shit for like 15 years, why do Kankalas are like, why? How long do you want a show's lifespan to last? And it's 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 interesting. I'm I'm next to you now, and you are a practitioner in the space, Oguti, and you've been going, you've gone through shows where people are crankalizing for a change of show. How long do people want radio shows to go on? Because we see it everywhere when people are replaced after ten years, after fifteen years. How long do South Africans think shows can go on for? Because I don't think I'm gonna work with Junior or so for ten years. Like maybe in two years' time, I don't want to do it this game anymore. Like, I want to do something else. And maybe in three years' time, I'm not going to be doing this podcast. I'm going to be doing something else. Like, things have to change. Like, I, I notice that things change. And that's the, most, that's the most constant thing in the world is that things change all the time. Every five years, every four years, something new comes out. We had Blackberries in 2010. We have something Jeez, else now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how long, um, thank you for being here, that I can ask you that question. How long do people want shows to go on? You are not going to be with Mac G forever. It shouldn't be. Sadly, hey guys, sadly we won't be together forever. I know people and they can't fathom, you know, the the end. And it it will come. We don't know when, to be honest. But I you know what it's like, bro. I think it's the same thing of if people could adapt to change just like that, a lot of couples would be divorced, for example, because there's a lot of couples who still are together but Shit is not the same anymore. They don't yeah. feel the same for one another. So with radio, it's that thing, right? You develop a love for a particular show and it becomes your daily schedule. It becomes a feature, a part of your day. Mm -hmm. When you wake up, these are the voices. And it's that old age thing uh, about humans and change, you know? There, there's no finite year, years that I can say South Africans want a show to last for 10 years. But 
if a radio show can last for 10 years, it should. But obviously, with it being radio, there's the numbers thing, there's the money thing. And the only time, really, a program manager or a station will say is if the station is taking a different direction, the numbers are there and everything is there, but they're taking a different direction for a reason, right? Or if the listenership is not there, which in turn also talks to the numbers because they're selling yeah. the listenership, et cetera, et cetera. Or sometimes people just get tired. It's difficult to answer. Like, it's like John Robbie, he was doing well on 702. Yeah. You know and I mean? how long had he been there? Like 20 years? For years forever. Yes, yes. And I don't think the numbers were bad. Or, and it's, you know, yeah, but, but the station may have wanted to take a different direction. Or maybe man was tired. He was just like, I'm tired. Yeah. So I think it's not just South Africans. The world over, uh, people, will, if they fall in love with a show, they want it to go on forever. Especially if they themselves, there is still something that they take home mm -hmm. from that show. Yeah. And, and sometimes we don't see it because we're so in love with the show. But I'm pretty sure the guy was doing the sermons for 10 years or whatever on Mkobo and there were people who no longer listened to them. Yeah. There were people like, ah, I'm not trying to listen to this mm. on a Sunday anymore. Because how many times can you listen to the same voice giving you the same message over and over, particularly with for our it. medium? Forever, but, bro. But what kind of human being do you need to be for that to happen? I, ca I, I cannot. Like, I go, I, I go on runs and I understand like we are de varying degrees of intellect, varying degrees of interest as yes, well. Yes, yes. I go on runs where... Um, I will listen to, and I'm on the run now listening to the Lex Friedman podcast. And I listen for five hours, like, and sometimes it's 20 hours in, in, a, in a five day span. Yeah. And I'm, because it's like, it's, I feel like I'm reading books. I'm listening to a scientist. I'm listening to someone from politics. And then maybe for six months, I won't listen. And then I go on a run of listening to Joe Rogan, if he has interesting people like Dave Chappelle. And then maybe go on a run for a month and then listen to something else. Because the texture of the voice, I get, I get what joe rogan is by listening to him for 20 hours i'm like okay cool he has these views on these things he has these yeah. views on other things yeah so maybe it's a diff it's a difference in our intellect our interest our us as human beings but maybe the average person um because they are stuck in the routine of going to work every day that they would they like to keep it like that my breakfast is my breakfast when i go into my car i need to hear this voice all the time but the dynamic is not the same to you because when i as a creative person who saw after five years, you feel like, geez, like I've I've exhausted every creative aspect of what I need to do here. Mm. I need to do something else now. Mm. Because I'm sure it's tedious to talk. And I've I've felt this. For every 15 minutes, there must be a break in between. Every 15 minutes, there must be a break in between. You know what I'm saying? Because on radio, every 15 minutes, o'clock is news. At quarter past, it's it's the first ad. At half past and 20 past, it's 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 a, it's an ad plus the um, the sports update and the traffic. Mm. And can you do that for five years and feel like you're stimulated creatively? No, for me. But for someone else with a different intellect profile, different creative profile, mm. they can go through that shit for like 20 years. I don't, I, I don't understand it. That's why I'm, I'm saying I'm glad I'm speaking to someone who's a practitioner. Maybe you have a different viewpoint about it. Like you wouldn't mind doing the same show for, even the show that you're currently doing now, you wouldn't mind doing it for five years. But maybe in two years time, you could feel different because you've just started it now. Yeah. There's two elements to your, your question. One, it's from the listener. So you said uh, right now you're on a run with Lex... Lex Friedman. Friedman, right? Yeah. Then it's Ninini, right? Because of your interest change and whatever. The same thing happens to the listener of Mkobo Nene. Remember, I no longer listen to a YFM, for example, yeah. right? But you'll find that YFM still has the same number of listeners they've had, if not more. If not more, yeah. Cause right? They're... Because we all go through phases where we're young. We'll listen to a Y and then move over. Just like on, on Mkhabo Nena. That guy, you were introduced to that guy when you were a kid. And you probably maybe listened to him up until you were 18, 19, or 16 and stopped. But there's another good leg on listening to him. You know, so it's not like people aren't changing. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're all humans. We all grow. Do you get me? Like, if I stay at Foslo um, and I listen to Garcia FM and they talk about the community stuff, the footballing tournaments that are happening, 
this event, that event, and I move, and I'm, I mean, I'm in Blackout right now, in a nice leafy summer. Yeah, boy. Right? Look at you, Nkuli. <laughs> I'm Nkulego's neighbor. When Saul pulls up, that's <laughs> how so I came here. Nkulego's neighbor came through to the gate to watch the black people. And I literally said to him, don't worry, I'm here for my friend here. Don't worry, don't worry. Do not be afraid. I'm not here to rob you. I know we're staying in South Africa, you know. It's a bad look. But when I'm here, I'm not going to listen to Cassie FM anymore. You get me, but there's a family probably who's just moved to to Forstler FM. I mean, to Forstler who are listening to to Cassie to, FM. To, to Cassie FM. Yeah. So I think it's very normal so for from, us to from, from, you, You're saying from a listener's perspective. I get yes, that. From a I get that hypothesis. From a broadcasting perspective, why would he stay there for ten years? Anyone, he or she stay. Because there. because you see why. Let me tell you. And the, the, and the remember, guy, they, are, they are the creative. If we were to sometimes if, if we were to uh, if we were to assume that everyone on radio is a creative, they care about the medium. Like you, within the first five minutes of us talking, mm. we were talking textures and sound, and I I get that language, mm. and I know that ninety percent of radio practitioners now are at a job, like but some siblings, you know, like mm-hmm. they don't even think about textures and sound. I played the slick talk thing deliberately because he made that statement better than a question I would have asked. Mm. The different texture, different color, mm-hmm. because I care about mediums. You yes. care about mediums, yes. but I think. Some people, particularly the radio presenters, are there because by some siblings and they're at a job and they don't ah. even think about the creative element of asking the same thing. What is your pillow talk? You ask it in 2010. What is your pillow talk? You ask it in, in 2011. What is your pillow talk between you and your partner? You ask it in 2012. I get it that it could be different human beings and the 12 year old is now 16 years old mm. and they're hearing pillow talk for the first time as a topic. But when I, as a practitioner, you are asking people about pillar talks and for ten consecutive years, yeah. yeah, about something like that. Hey, yeah. bro, me to be honest, you see, there's certain kinds of show that can run for that long, especially shows that are based on you and your opinion. You know, that are not maybe feature heavy, yeah, like a Garrett Cliff. It was very politically, you know, heavy, but because he's invested in such. Uh, 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 spaces and there's all this shit happening in that space. But for example, the guy though at uh, um, he's just a preacher. That's all he knows is to preach. <laughs> Let's be honest, he's not a creator yeah, yeah. or a radio or whatever. But it would be very difficult to stay in that kind of thing. For but even with us, we're not even on radio as podcasts and chill. But let's be honest, there'll come a point. Where it's no longer exciting to be there, that's and that's when you must stop. That's what I was saying to you. When like, you're not going to be there forever. You must, that, see, when it's no longer exciting, yeah, waking up and doing it, you must stop. When you don't get a bit of those nerves, and people who do like stage performances, theater, or whatever, they'll always say. They've got a bit of nerves. Yeah, and now, I mean, when, as you as you come in here, I was nervous. A bit, for real, yeah. A me bit. too. As I came here, you know, I even yeah. grabbed uh, some beer. Like you, you, when that stops, then you also ought to have a, a hard look at yourself in yeah. the mirror and be like, "Do I still want to be here?" Do you know what's but crazy? It's very different for a lot of people. We're different. Some people have the stomach for that. Yeah, they can do that thing for years. <laughs> you know some people find ways of. Being creative within the limitations. What's crazy is that Sundowns has won the league five times in a row and I don't have the stomach to do it anymore. I've never told the audience this. For real? So you're I, a Sundowns fan? No. I can't tell people, but I'm not a categorical. Well, no, you, you can't I, tell I can't, people. I'm a journalist, but, but journalist, yes. the nice thing is that categorically I can tell them that I'm not a Sundowns fan. They think that I am, but I'm not. I'm just saying, as a creative person, to literally cover a football league who well, from the Ooh, first day, yes, I know who's going to win. Yes. Like, it opened on Friday. There's no excitement, right? Like, I, I, don't, I don't have the stomach to do it anymore. Like, I don't have the motivation to do it anymore. But the and audience will go crazy. It. Yeah. And, and we know who's going to win. It's like watching a Steven Seagal movie. Mm. You know he's not going to die. And Chuck Norris movie, you know he's not going to die. So what the fuck is the point of watching? You know what I'm saying? But isn't that the challenge, though? That you must then create excitement. Because you do? see, with movies... We know that this guy's not going to die. But when he's going to take a leap from one 
train a coach to the next. <laughs> you know, we, we almost suspense. like, ah, don't die. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. To get me, because that's how they create the excitement. But I, but I mentioned Even though Steven we know Seagal, this motherfucker's safe. But I mentioned Steven Seagal deliberately, because there are those actors who don't even have a scratch, right? Steven Seagal, Chuck Norris, like ah, he's yes. literally going to beat the shit out of everyone. Yes. And you know that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So where is the motivation, you know, to continue watching him? Because one of the criticisms when we were kids with, with, with Steven Seagal, Particularly and and Chuck Norris, yeah. even on Walker Texas Ranger. Steven Seagal would fight guys with guns with just two knives Nun, or one knife. Nunchucks or knives or yes. whatever, like non-lethal weapons. Yes, and he would still come out of it. Yes. you know what I'm saying. So yeah. that's like the lack, the the lack of motivation for me comes from that. That I already know the season said I was going to win the league because they've won it five times in a row, mm-hmm. and it's like, how do I make this exciting? And it's exciting. Like the first opening week views were like half a million. Which is good. People still watch us talk views about off. it. Oh, you, um, your guys' views. Yes, yes. So the views from people yes, they yes, watched yes. us five hundred thousand times dope. on the, on the opening weekend. Yeah. So that was dope, and that's the number that we expect, anyways, most of the time. Mm-hmm. But me and I, as a creative, I know I'm dying inside because like this is not exciting. Because I've done, I've said, congratulations, Mamelo de San Nows, you've won the league. I've said it five different Jeez. times, five different years Jeez. at the end of the season. So it's like, ah, fuck this. But that's the thing, right? Isn't it then... Then shouldn't the focus not be about who's going to win the league? Right? <laughs> Can't you be creative somehow with it? That's your challenge. The limitation of knowing the numbers, because I come from a publication, football fub- publication. I still fucking can't believe... Let, like, Let me got sold for 100 million. Somewhere in that region. Jesus, it's crazy, bro. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, no one is... Because is, I stopped reading that thing when I was in primary school. There's an LSM. There is a significant... So South Africa is... is, 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 yes. is, is South Africa is divided in, in many compartments, right? We have moved away from the compartments of going Ekasi, right? But there's like a significant three to five million people that want to consume that. Not, not all of them buy it. Maybe 300,000 from that population pool buy it. So like 3 million men um, who are uneducated who dropped out of school. They love football. They work in construction. They do labor, labor work, uh, physical labor work. Yes. They, they are that audience. And that's why they still maintain the life of that newspaper. So now, um, instead of 10 years ago, it was 300,000, 400,000. Mm. Now, it still circulates 100,000 per week, Sokala Duma, right? So still, the population pool still exists. Mm. Ekasi, there are still niggas wow. who struggle with school and they drop out and they become like regular niggas um, who work in construction and part of their routine is to buy a football publication and see interviews wow. with their favorite players. So there still is that market for it, that market. you know. That's the mistake that we make um, even with, with podcasting. Because podcasting is easily accessible to people who can afford data and Wi-Fi and students, um, and people who have no limitation with Wi-Fi, they can they can pay fiber for a thousand bucks. We can make the mistake of thinking that everyone is not poor. There's a significant number of no, people in people this country are poor, who yeah, are poor. A lot of like, who struggle. They can't even watch podcasts because the majority struggle. of the country. Yes, over sixty percent of the country is poor, and they Probably live on less than three thousand rands per month. You see, the fact that we say poor is three thousand. But even people earning seven k, nine k, technically, because you spend four k going to work. Yeah. Then you have to look the part, you have to buy clothes, you have to do all this, so a, 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 a huge chunk. But go back, going back to your question, bro, I think it's very difficult to do the same thing forever and ever, especially if you're a creative. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you said, I think you said earlier on, for some people it's just jobs. So they just wake up and they're on autopilot. A lot of people are on autopilot, yeah. especially like, you know, in in, 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 in in the media game, they're just on autopilot. It's like, ah, I get paid to do this, whatever. But then again, how many people can really say, I'm bored? I'm not going to participate in this. It's like the, the current world champion, the chess world champion. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a guy from Finland. Yeah. He's not participating. He's not going to defend his title. Mm-hmm. He said he's bored. How much money do you know how much money is is from making? Because that's that's something that gives you the yes the balls to do that when you don't when you don't need the money right yeah he's like he's bored he's tired like he's bored of playing chess he doesn't want to see a chess board that's incredible he's not gonna or competitively I find that compelling I was like that is I admire that like if someone can say that that's compelling. Even more if he doesn't even have lots of money. Let's say he's got enough. Nah, that's risky. Because a lot of times, a lot of times, how much is enough? It's risky though. But but maybe he's not super rich. But to him, 
he has got enough because those people will never get to that point of saying how much is enough mm. that's why we see people get meltdowns you know like burnout right in front of us yeah you know then you hear so and so yeah. is on drugs or so and so you know what i mean because of you're just taking every gig that comes and you gotta yeah. be careful sometimes i was wondering why was miriam makeba still gigging at 70 something and I think the story was that she was collapsing. She collapsed, sorry, on stage. And that's how she. And yeah, that was the lead up to her passing that, away. Um, I I usually because I'm a fan, I have CDs of her as well. I'm like, why do you need to gig when you're 70 years old? Um, so that's like the dichotomy between a job and a creative. Someone can make the argument that she was such a creative that she thought that that was her stage and that's where she belongs. Or it's all she knew, also. Yeah. So some people get you they 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 go away from the stage end up being sad. It's like some people you take the mic away from them and they don't know what to do. They themselves. lose their identity. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's mm-hmm. like well, I woke up for twenty years, spoke on the mic, and now it's taken away from you, and you don't know what to do. So maybe she didn't even need the money, right? And then there's the other side of the coin, but it's not with her particular, but other artists whereby you made the money, you didn't invest wisely, you didn't you weren't wise. What the man? You didn't save. Not even invest. Yeah. You didn't save. Because sometimes that's all that will save you. Just saving. And they need to gig now at this age. So it's always interesting to see that. Have you ever thought about your name? That uh, it means the eye of the house. And by extension, someone can call you CCTV. Hmm? You get it? I don't get it. Oh, wow. <laughs> huh? CC as in CC. CCTV. <laughs> I've been thinking I've been working on this for a long time and you motherfucker don't get it. I get it, but <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> is, it, is it bad, bad? It's bad. I get let's the CC break, part. Let, let's break but what it. about no, the no. TV part? You CCTV, know? CCTV, it's all homes, no? Yeah. CCTV camera. Oh CCTV camera. Cause it watches. It's the eye. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, slow it's, motherfucker. No, the delivery though, hey. Yeah, that was, was poor. Hey, that delivery. was poor delivery. Yeah, yeah the delivery. <laughs> I will give you that. <laughs> oh yes, actually. CCTV. Fuck, it's so long the CCTV and and uh, 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 security services. That would be dope, right? It's, it's so long. So and you got I'm the saying go to, CCTV. Go, don't go to that business. <laughs> oh, you've tried it. No, no, no. I haven't tried it. I'm not saying... You are a creative person. You might not have the skill. I don't... Nah, nah, nah. I'd never... I'd maybe invest in it, but not run it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I wouldn't. One thing I've... Yeah. Nah, I'd never go into that. It's, it's, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Except um, for the name. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> do you niggas edit out any content? No, we don't. Unless we're a guest and the guest and wants they us to... for it. Uh, yeah, edit out. These days we don't. Yeah, I I don't too. Before, so. so before, so we never did, and then we got in shit with the LGBTQI community, <laughs> with, with the Manchester <laughs> thing, right? So every time after recorded, they were like, "Yo, yo, no that thing, no that thing," because that episode when we recorded it, yeah. it was just normal. Another day at work, oh, we had some chuckles, cool. Yeah. We didn't think it was gonna be a thing, and then there was a period afterwards where we. We don't even ask one another this question now. We after that incident would ask, "Yo, anything, guys? You think should be removed?" Nah, nah man, nah. that's fucked up. And then now we are back to, to we don't even ask. Yeah, because so we, the thing we is, we hardly remove anything it unless if we do that, we, it doesn't separate us from radio. Then and slowly we'll get because there are ads on no, YouTube. But if we yes, of course, if you are malicious, you can internalize yes. it. If you are being deliberately yes. malicious, yes. but you have to be offensive. It's important to dedicate yourself to being offensive, not not get out of the way like to be that. offensive. But dedicate yourself you ha- to be offensive. You have to embrace the idea that the nature of the space that we're operating in, you are going to be offensive. People's opinions generally are offensive. Yes. To someone. Like, and you take offense. Like, it's yes. not given. Like, you go out of your way to take offense. You could yes. decide not to consume that nigga's content if it yes. offends you that much. Yes, you know? people's opinions are naturally offensive. I mean, some religious beliefs are just offensive when you hear them and you're a person. You're like, what? Yep. Do you get me? So, there's no ways you're going to do a podcast and not be offensive or offend someone. Yes. 
and offense is taken yes. and not given. Not given. You go you out of me? your way to take. Yes, you take the offense. And I, I wasn't here handing out. You got an offense. You, you just came and took it. <laughs> I was just chatting to my friend Nguli. <laughs> you came and took the offense. So, um, yeah, but I think we had a beautiful point now because of, and shout out to the Chillers, because of them sticking by our side because they get, you know, that, okay, I fucking love these guys. And what they said, yeah, you may have found offense in it, but they weren't trying to offend anyone, right? They're just speaking their truth or the truth from their vantage point. Yeah. And so through that, they've supported us, unwavering support. So now we can still do what we've been doing, be brutally honest about when we see shit, we call it as we see it and how we see it. And the guys want to cancel us, know that it's not worth it's it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, not, I, it's I, like I, shooting someone and they're wearing a bulletproof vest. Or well, not a vest, a bad idea. But they've got this shield. Yeah. You'll shoot till you realize, oh, okay, I'm actually never going to hit them. The greatest mistake that they ever made was not understanding the symbiotic relationship between all of those platforms. When they were trying to cancel you uh, for the transgender statements, and if you, you, yeah, you can see from where you were, maybe at 120,000, yeah. uh, there was exponential growth. That happens because Literally. YouTube owns, sorry, Google or Alphabet owns Google, owns YouTube. And every single time there's a search behavior uh, from a significant pool of people from a specific region, South Africa, um, YouTube suggests that content to them. This is a person that you were searching, you want to mm -hmm. see it the next time that they are on YouTube. Or even the, the, the behavior on digital, on social media. Uh, whoever is searched a lot, whenever you're trending, if I release um, an episode in, in that moment, within the 24 hours of that moment, it's going to do well. Particularly if the microphones are great, the lights are great, and we're having a the great conversation. The quality is good. Yeah, yeah, the quality is good, of course. It can always do badly if the quality is not good. Yes. Shot from a fuzzy phone or whatever, uh -huh. then we can't hear you. Uh -huh. But it's always going to do well when there's digital behavior and the searchability. Uh, of the name of that person. Who is this Mac G that people are trying to cancel? Uh -huh. If 100,000 people type that in a seven-day period, exponentially, your thing will grow. And they didn't know that they were empowering you guys. Yes. Every time, you see, because of the, sh the show is good and has been good for the longest time, even before I joined it, by the time we got in trouble, there are all these amazing shows and all these episodes that are slept on and now we get in trouble for this thing. And like, as you said, some people just picked up the newspaper in a taxi. Oh, Daily Sun or yeah. The Citizen. Yeah. And and I, I remember The Citizen. Not The Citizen. No, no. City Press. But one of the newspapers had an article. Um, five podcasts you should watch when you're tired of Mac G. Aibo. Yeah, it's for real. Aibo. Yeah, it's for real. Google it. Fact Yo. five. You should give a try when you're nah, tired of man. Mac G. And it opens up by, you know, talking about our podcast. Now, of course, the person who's reading this and is, does not know podcasting or they know podcasting, just haven't checked out, you know, our podcast. Yeah. Now they're going to go on YouTube and search for this thing. Do you get me? So a lot of people were all like, I was introduced to you guys when you got in trouble. Um, and I was like, oh, is this what people are going on about? That's actually funny. And yeah. it doesn't seem like it's coming from a place of hate. Yeah. Damn, let me check out. And people have binged, you know, binged us like they were watching a series overnight. We were in Botswana just yesterday and one of the ladies there, uh, it was a Q&A with our chillers. And she was like, I, I initially... I, hate, I didn't like you guys because of what I heard about the trouble. And apparently you guys are sexist, homophobic, but I'm a fucking big chiller now. And I realize that you guys are not all those things. But thanks to those things, I gave I you guys a chance. You. And I was like, fuck, these guys are fucking amazing. They're doing your marketing job. An incredible Sterling marketing. marketing. Like, mm. thanks to everybody who's tried to cancel us. They've really, really... And we don't even strive to say, oh, what can we say? Nah, let's get canceled. Right? And every time we've had an episode... The numbers skyrocket. And yeah. you're a numbers guy. You do this thing as well. You've noticed. Yeah. The numbers skyrocket because already yeah. we've got... And that's the, this the is now... The interesting dynamic is that Itiski at the time, at the time of what happened, yeah. you guys were around 80,000 and Itiski was maybe around 50 or 60. Jeez. So you always keep an eye on, on people. Yes. And now you guys are like 700,000, close to 700,000. Yes. And we're like 150, 150,000. Yes. Right, you, know? you see the so exponential... I, I saw the exponential growth. Yes, I saw it's literally it in, just like... Oh. You know, we're, we were never even in... The, we're, we're in the same city 
and then boom, you guys were, went to another country. Yeah, like, we're in Black Gallery now. <laughs> y'all are still in force, though. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all are in force, though, money wise. Hell no. Nah, but, yo, 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 yo. World sports betting is dope, man. We, we got. Oh, um, so let me break it down because I'm sure aspiring um, content creators as well can learn from this. Yes. Um, so for every. What we did with World Sports Betting, because they are a betting company in football, our first deal we did when we had like 15,000 subscribers and they 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 said they're going to pay 80 rands per thousand views, right? Now, if you do half a million views at 80 rands, that's like 80 rands times um, 500. Um, it worked out to about 40,000, 32,000. Wow. And then rands in rand value, which is not taking into account the YouTube revenue, mm. right? So we were starting to make like boom, 50 to 60,000. Nice. But then we exponentially grew. We had 15,000 uh, subscribers at the time, but we yeah. grew, our numbers grew to a point where they started paying like 200,000 per month oh. based on the number of views, Beautiful. you know? So the space, yeah. creating content on YouTube is where the money is, but yes. you then get the money from having an audience and having the views uh -huh. and having existing yeah. human beings. Because one of the things that they did to test us was literally to start a competition and people must SMS this and they will win 10,000. And they saw that they got like 2,000 entries, which they never do in their own campaigns. Mm -hmm. They will get maybe a Or even on radio. Or yeah, 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 yeah. They don't have foot soldiers, people that are real human beings yeah. that are applying for this, for this. And they realized that that opened the floodgates for us. Um, and that deal is almost like a forever deal because they bought 51% of our business mm. um, at some point, Itisky TV. They bought so. um, Itisky Media, Itisky TV, our newspaper, our website, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So there's money to be made in YouTube channels um, if you do it the right way and you speak yeah. to the right corporates. And I said to them, like, yo, if you ever hear anything controversial about us, we're going to have a meeting and talk about it. You're not going to cancel. You're not going to send us a statement, a public statement that yes. we're distancing. We know you're going to talk to us. And that's the relationship. And those guys are Afrikaans people. Um, well, sports betting, they are mainly Afrikaans people. Um, you know, and every single time there's been a thing, they never even come to it. But I said it from the beginning because I was unafraid of losing the sponsor. Yes, yes. I was like, yo, if ever we have any problem with people trying to cancel us because of the things that we say, you are going to have a conversation with Jason and I, you know, with my partner. And it's weird how, I mean, a lot of brands, they 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 want the, the success of the that comes with the numbers on podcasts and when you do it right, yep. you know, or independent media like YouTube and stuff when you do it right. Yet, they don't want the smoke that comes with you being so open and not limited in what to say. Yeah. Your opinion. It's the weirdest thing ever. It's like, it's the weird, it's like, yo, guys, you're enjoying all these 700,000 subscribers, but... And you really want them, but you're scared of what we might say. But all those 700,000 people are here, and that was that's what has kept them, what we might say. Yeah. It's the, it's the reason why you guys are here and speaking to us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's you you, you want those eyes. And it's never malicious. The, mm -hmm. the fucked up thing, because I, I saw that clip of yours, uh, your LGBTQI, um, and I was like, I call malicious, Like, yeah. there's nah, nothing malicious. Never, you know never. what I'm saying? And, and brands, like, they get... I, I don't know, like, they, they, they get so scared about the noise, but I, I conscientized right. our people. They, ha they, they don't have, I mean, they could walk away any moment, but I think they respected the, the idea that in so far as, in as much as we need their bread to, to, to have employees and we need that, you know, but we are also open to them that, look, guys, if anything happens, we need to sit down and talk about it, but we're not going to change anything here. We are creative people. We're not going to change it. Uh, to suit your suitability. You came here knowing what we do, we're doing. And yeah. we are not malicious, but we're straightforward. And we should never create a scenario where uh, people are, are censoring themselves for the bag. Yeah, no, 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 never. Because that's how then you lose the people, right? Yep. They'll be like, well, this shit, then we might as well watch Soccer Zone or whatever. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we might as well just watch Soccer Zone. Another thing that I've noticed, speaking like, you know, uh, to upcoming YouTubers or podcast sure, sure what i mentioned about the our numbers have spiked and always improved whenever we, we, we try to get cancelled i've noticed like some you know podcast will get in trouble for some controversial shit but and i'm like oh we're trying to do that thing you know we but the thing is that's gonna bring you views for that episode yeah right but if the content 
is not kick ass. Because yeah. what people will do is check out another episode. Because yeah. of course they're on your page. It'll recommend other episodes. And if those are pop, then it's pointless. Yeah. You know, it's pointless having stay. that burst of, 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 of views just coming in within a week and you've got like suddenly 20, 30,000 views where normally you get 5,000 because if the content is not quality. So it's not a trick that you can, a thing you can do. It'll happen, it happens, but it must happen when you've built a solid foundation of good quality content. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that um, because it comes from someone who's experienced in the industry. And yeah, you, you see those mistakes. I was speaking to Ria around the time that the Bonang thing happened. Um, and Uria, oh, oh, oh Ria everything Hopan. is same music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and that's and, my boy. Yeah, yeah, we love those young niggas. Yeah, and yeah, they need to, they need to navigate the space their own way. Um, however, they feel like they want to navigate it. Um, but there are times where you need the support structure and counseling from niggas who've done this. Uh, people yeah, who are, definitely. You know, oh, we yes. need to counsel each other, like not counseling, counsel like a, a formal counseling. <laughs> not cancel. <that. laughs> hey, be careful there. You know what I'm saying? We need, <laughs> we need to, counsel to counsel each other. Um, talk to each other you know what I'm saying listen yeah. to each other we if, need more cancel culture yeah 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 not cancel ourselves. culture um, do you do you have negative bullshit around you and Nota or is it one sided one sided how so I spoke to Nota we, he come, we, he was my friend actually let me be up front and okay. we, we chop it up maybe once a month is he really your friend do you yeah, check yeah, up on yeah, him. yeah. Is we he talk. Okay? Is he doing yeah, yeah, we talk even with. Is the, he fine? Yes, yes, he's fine. And I even shot an episode to talk and explain when that um, Perita episode happened. Um, you know, I explained to the guys like, "Yo, we've we've spoken for hours on the phone, met face to face. Um, you know, okay. we, we counsel each other, not cancel okay. each other, mm-hmm. right? Um, we niggas we spend like hours on end sometimes. Um, and he's brought a lot of failure to my life, and I've brought a lot of failure to his life as well. You know, uh, now. Let me tell you something. What you just described between you and Nota, off, off, off mic. Yeah. I was like that with him. Nota would send me links. He probably does still. He'd send me links of interesting conversations on YouTube. Yeah. He'd send me interesting stuff to read up on. You know what I mean? And I admire that about him, his brains, when yeah. they function that way. And we'd be like that. Um, if there's time, he'd call me and we'd chat. You know what I mean? About these things. And one day I announced that I'll be joining Kai FM and out of nowhere, well, not out of nowhere, that triggered, you know, the whole sold out. Yeah. He opened the whole space. He insulted me, uh, mentioned, you know, some shit that I've gone through before um, that I've spoken about on the podcast. And he weaponized that, you know, and then he said shit that made me question all those things and moments would have on the phone and talking and yeah. and share sharing content and opinions on this content. Him calling me, be like, "That was an amazing show." This and this and that. Was it even genuine? When now you're gonna turn around and say, "That's what Mac gets for employing a a a, a I don't know. I'm paraphrasing, you know, like a a a fucking loser, a serial loser who can never be fucking trusted, a scoundrel." Whatever, you know what I mean? Where so, do you think that comes from, though? Because no, what, no, what, what you... What it you, comes from... What? What comes from where? Where do you think that... Like, that seems like out of nowhere because what you've described, your relationship with him prior uh, is exactly what we're going through. Like, we counsel each other, we talk, we, sh- we, sh- we share... Yeah, he didn't call me. He didn't call me once. Yeah. He didn't call me once. I blocked him after, like, three days. Mm. You know? That's what I'm saying. Where do you once. think that comes from? I, I blocked them on Twitter. I don't know. I was like, damn, is that how you felt about me all the time? Uh, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, I've spoken about this. I went through a period where this episode is not sponsored by all betting, right? No. Yeah, I, I went through a gambling problem. You know what I mean? And literally, he attacked me with that. He was like, how can Mac ever uh, um, choose to work with a, a, he didn't even say former, like a gambling addict. He can't be trusted. He's a piece of shit scumbag on the earth a fucking serial loser how dare he works with someone like that yeah. how dare can even you know consider someone like that Saul is a backstabber he's this and this just some other and other hurtful things because I just left the space on, like, the, okay. on the last other episode, hurtful disgusting things yeah on the last episode that I did with him uh, we're going to drop another one this week and the last episode the one where we were talking about the elephant in the room the situation with his wife I literally said look if you were trying to make a point about Saul 
you've made it. Can you stop talking about it now? Uh, but I, what I didn't do is to delve into the details of what the fuck is happening. Mm. You know, like I was Bro. very curious, but I realized like if I ask, I think we did talk about it with him. And that's why I was like, when I talk to you, I need to understand like what the fuck is happening. I was I l- fine with that guy, bro. Dog, I'm the last person from the podcast family to block that guy. Mac had blocked him ages ago on, 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 on WhatsApp. Other people have had blocked him. I was the one still talking to him. If he had an opinion and it was valid to get to the podcast. Yeah. Now that Berita thing, I knew about it um in 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 in, in March, April, that his wife had left him. You know, I knew about it that his wife had left him mid Jan. I don't know what's going on about but it's not me, it's not my kind of style. You know what I mean? Like I said, I don't like being personal. You know, I don't like hurting people. You know, if I say shit and maybe it's hurtful and it's on the podcast, it's probably banter. But to be personal like that, you know, uh, I know a lot of shit because it's a very small industry. I know a lot of shit about him, but I would never just come out and and diss him with, with those things or try to hurt him with those things. Um, but because I considered him not a friend, but someone I'm cool with. Yeah, you know, but if you can say shit like that about me as a human, simply because you think you're gonna fucking lose your favorite podcast, then I don't rate you. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna simply lose because that fear from him and everybody else who called me a sellout, who today now they like, hey, they cool with me when even when they bump into me, and that thing made me question a lot of people because. Just like with him, he switched up on me like that and started insulting me on 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 uh, publicly. It made me question even the people I meet who are like they chillers. And I'm like, oh, were you the people who insulted me when you know when 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 uh, um, sell out, sold out, sold out was trending. So sold out. Yeah, were you the people who 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 were 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 were, were cheering Nota on when he was insulting me and having threats about me? Do you get me? So. What is it? It's fake love then. You know what I mean? Especially if it's because you are saying all those things because you fear. And we hadn't made an official statement. I hadn't made an official statement. And the assumption was Sol is leaving the podcast. Right? Even when I said I'm not leaving the podcast, then it became, oh, the podcast won't be the same. How many fucking weeks have we done of the podcast since I joined Kaya? Is it not the fucking same? And not even a single person. They inboxed me, insulted me, and they said, yeah, Mac pulled you out of a rat. He saved your life. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Because of the podcast. And to me, it's like, whoa, bro. I get that. But have I, have I, have I been a passenger on the podcast? Yeah. Have I not helped the fucking podcast also grow? Right? Has it just been a one-way relationship? Or has it been a mutually beneficial relationship between me and the podcast? I, I joined the podcast i added my value to the podcast added value to the podcast you get me and i get people's frustrations or fears rather when they heard that but it was unwarranted the abuse i fucking faced Mm -hmm. you know and i get the abuse from everybody else because they can't even reach me but to get that kind of abuse from someone who has my fucking number they couldn't even call be like yo what does this mean for the podcast what does this mean for you what does this mean for us, people who love the podcast? You know, so yeah, man. Uh, uh, from my end, I don't, I, I don't rate him. And fuck Nota, you know, he's not. He, he was someone who I thought could be my friend. We were cool, you know. But um, like to me, your character as a man is just. It's it's it's. How, how do you fix that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you can fix a lot of things, yeah, but you can't point fix of someone no return. attacking. I, yeah. It's a point of no return. Yeah, like I think literally, the, it's a point of no return. From when I'm looking at it from your perspective, it's a point of no return. If yeah. if there was a line of communication that was open, yeah. and I speak totally to Nota for there. hours and hours on end on the phone, and we meet in person, mm. if there was a line of communication that was open and you could talk about it, and anyways, it was always going to be your decision. It's your and, life, and I don't answer to him. Right, but he could have always asked. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. my decision to Particularly make. if there's a build up to a yes, some, some form of a, know? a friendship that you guys yeah. are talking. But then you see, then it also like it's like to me, it's like, damn, bro, this guy is he really that hungry for for clout and the fame because that's what it comes across as. If you have access to someone and you can call them, 
and you know they respond. I never, I mean, not always answer his calls because I'm busy half the time, but I'll always get back to him and he knows that. So if you would rather not go that route and publicly and even tag me, now I question why are you even raising this? You know, is it for, for, for clout mm. or is it genuine concern, um, you know, uh, around the podcast that you enjoy so much mm. you know so yeah man to me he, he he's not a, a good person that i can even consider a, a, a good mate of mine you know uh, to me it's a, like you say the point of no return man you know yeah can you it's just bad energy that would you refute what he says about his involvement in getting you kaya hi guys is that a thing come on bro you s- okay but look these are questions that are out there, yeah. right? And I feel like you know the response to this. <laughs> How did he get me a... Dude. Possibly no one at Kai even knows him personally. Number one, right? Number two... How do you call Kaya or, or someone at Kaya... And tell them, I think you must hire Saul. So he said what exactly? He said, so, you got me the job to test me. So, or you got me the me, job genuinely. Let me paraphrase it. Right. Yeah. Number one. So so, so, so this, the possible scenario he was drawing, but he mentioned this to me. I don't remember verbatim what he said, but the possible scenario he was drawing was that we are directly at loggerheads as podcasters with radio, right? Um, and one of the ways, so we are in a battle with radio. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. one of the ways that they, will, they would have tried to and stabilize or destabilize um, the biggest podcast on the continent and possibly around the world mm-hmm. was to get their best one of their best people, either you, Mac, or you, mm-hmm. right? So he says there must have been two other radio stations, um, and Kaya was the best option because um, it was the one option that allows you to do both, right? And I think he hints at at involvement within those conversations. No, 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 no. He's lying. I think we all know, though, that he's lying. That's why I'm, like, asking, is your friend okay? He's lying, man. And how 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 would he orchestrate that or be the catalyst of of, of, of that move for me yeah. and then be the first one to bash it? When it that happens. almost sounds like he thought about that later on, right? Like, oh, if he wanted people to believe that, that's what he should have said the day it was announced. To be like, I helped him get that job. That's a lie. That's believable. But no, man. Nota did not, bro, I've been talking to Kaya for a while. He called me. We've been going back and forth, you know, to outline certain things, to be like, yo, this is, the podcast is what I do. This is this. And then, you know, uh, some of the the, 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 uh, the issues in the contract, etc. You know, for a while, it's been a back and forth. Nota was not involved. Man, Nota does not have that that authority, He's not the authority of, of what? Of who? Already with all this bullshit is done, he's made himself an island. He's isolated himself, alienated himself. Any clout and any power he had and respect, he has lost it amongst a lot of people. So who is he going to call and get a job? Me? No. I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm being honest. That's how people feel about him. Those are already blocked by everyone. He can't get access to anyone on podcasts. He can't call Mac. Can't call me. Right? No one's going to answer his call there. And that's the biggest podcast in the country. So which kind of authority does he sway? After all the things that have happened with him and and, and the rant and and then does he does anyone believe that he will call any radio station and and appoint or help uh to 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 influence a decision of appointing a breakfast co-host come on guys let's be realistic man you know let's be realistic bro uh but like i said you know very smart guy i remember when you got in trouble um on the podcast with with the 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 the, the, the lgbtq community mm-hmm. i was like yo let's put up a statement i think nota would really write a well a good statement you know i like his brain it's good and i remember i had that open letter of Questa in mind. Oh, yes, I saw and I, that. Uh, that went to 5FM yes. way back. And that was so influential. And he was, so, was, he was so young. Yeah, that was influential and he was so young. And I was like, 
it read like it was Nota back then because I knew of him by then. You know, I didn't, we've bumped into one another here and there, yeah. but we weren't really friends or anything. And also, I, I really used to rate the guy, you know, and a part of me still rates a part of his brains. You know what I mean? Because he's the, fucking the constructive. He's, yeah, he's phenomenal. Like, yeah, he's, he's very smart. smart. Not, not just he's extremely very... smart. And I like the constructive part of his brains and the other part that wants to destroy that wants to fight that loves the the clout and the trending at any cost you want to trend at any cost you even lie and that's the disgusting part that i don't like and the him as a man the character of him as a man i don't like you know but the 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 the, the brains guy smart guy eloquent well-spoken curious guy who loves reading up and finding out about things and sharing info i love that guy you know the man, uh, not so much. No, so that's that on him. Yeah. Did you, at any point during that, because the soul sold out trended and I was just feeling for you as a human being. I was, that's why I was like agitating for him to stop. I'm like, yo, you've made your point now. Mm -hmm. If you were trying to make the point about selling out, mm. did it affect you in no, any way? Just like the whole Dineo thing didn't affect me. I don't, I used to, bro, I'm very sensitive, you know? So when you're sensitive... Sometimes we're, we're masochists in a way that you know you're sensitive. Then you're going to search or you're going to go on that trend that you know. And you're going to find abuse. The abuse you're looking for, you're yeah, going to find gonna it. Find. It's like going over your woman's phone. That's why I tell you I never read the comments. Yeah. Ever, ever, ever. Don't. And you, because you, it's weird, right? You read the comments of any episode. They're all praising your amazing work. You'll find one guy always who's gonna, be an asshole, who's gonna just say shit, right? And that's the comment that's gonna ruin your day. Yep, unfortunately. And that's gonna the comment you're gonna think about and think about before recording the next episode. You're thinking about it's in your head. So I yeah. never, never, ever, ever, ever. People don't understand it when I explain to them that they they don't know it because they're not going through it. They've not created yeah. anything influential. Yeah. That shit. The fact that you have to think about what was being said about you on the last episode. You go into the microphone for the next episode thinking about that stupid shit. And it affects you. It affects Unfortunately, it does. Yeah, we're human. So protect that human side of you. Don't. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't. And that, I feel, made me ready for last week. You know, where I was like, mm -mm, I'm not. Hence, I haven't listened. I mean, I love Slick Talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Slick Talk. But, yeah, with but another video. I'm like, I know Slick Talk is going to go in. Let me not check this out now you know even <laughs> though it may be in my defense even though a lot of the tweets yeah. were protecting me you know from what they see as bullying or whatever it was still some very ugly tweets and some it's like someone will tweet you and be like so wake the fuck up stop being an ice boy right so to them it's like they coming from a place of love yeah but fuck, bro. What that's the a, fuck are you saying? That's a to perverse me? love. If you're giving me love and you calling see, me, and you're calling me names, yeah, that's a perverse you get me? love. That's bullshit. Love. I will stab you if I see you face to face. Yeah, yeah. and also sometimes it, it, it would be the most disgusting thing targeted towards the nail. And I'm yeah. like, guys. So how are you gonna work with This is with a them? human. I wake up and name two guy in my name. Now, <laughs> now I'm being calm, but in my name. Right, and that's what I don't like. It's like, yo, bro, you're swearing at someone who I, I, I work with, right? In my name, mm. in mine, and me and Anderson Scott, I'm cool because I know it's part of a new breakfast show. We're still finding the chemistry, we're still finding our dance. Yet, then people are gonna be like, and it's easy for even the other person to wake up and be like, your people, you know what I mean? And then, because I'm the closest thing she can communicate that is maybe she can put a face to this whole barrage of hate yeah i'm the i'm the face and that i'm going to be targeted yeah. and if she, if she's immature enough you're the orchestrator yes yes do you get me so now i need to now wake up and i need to now be you know like and i'm like oh this is just unnecessary can't we just work on this thing that we're doing as we were last week so it's really it it it, it People don't get it, but it does affect 
the it, dynamic. It but fortunately, yeah. because I don't live in those, uh, it, it didn't because I don't live in in those comments. You yeah. know, sometimes you can't avoid them because they've tagged you, right? You go on Twitter, oh, I'm trending. You go to your mentions, it's about that. Mm-hmm. And once you read something, you can't unread it. You know, but a lot of the really bad stuff you'll find in the trends, and I, I don't. Even now, it's been a while since I, I checked out the comments. Yeah. Um, because you know us, we check out the comments to 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 gauge our performance. You know, and then someone there's gonna just say some shit. I don't check out the comments yeah. anymore. I, 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 I just goes up, it's up. I don't even watch it. I just up. told someone this morning to not screen. People love you. As your family, um, as your spouse, as I your know friends, what you're say. right? They I love you. Where you're go. I'm like, yo, don't don't screenshot comments on my behalf and send them to me. Do- Sorry, Thank you. Please, fuck this. I'm a creator, bro. Thank Let you. the consumers consume. I'm a creator. You're, yes, you Look, create. Hey. Let them fucking consume. Yeah. I told. I, I knew exactly when you, you started that line. You were gonna say that. I told them a mate of mine. Um, Oh fuck! I can't play the voice note because so I actually something. addressed the issue, yeah. and then I told him. I said, "Listen, next time, never, ever, 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 ever bring me this shit. This is my WhatsApp. It's my place of peace. Yeah, it's I'm good here. I'm here. I'm the people I love, and you're one of them. Never fucking screenshot that shit. How, how, how the fuck are you gonna screen screenshot insults or bad things about me and send? And then you send. What the fuck is that? Right in this." You've taken, I must say, but I'm sorry to swear in your house, yeah, man. It's all good. Outside, <laughs> and you've put them right in my living room. Uh, yeah, yeah. I eat here for crying out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I have sex here, and you've taken this filthy thing and you've placed it right here at my doorstep. What is that? Never do that. Mm. You know, so why would I then go out there and swim through the shit? And because it affects me, I'm human. Yeah. And this, I was explaining to someone, they were like, how come you're not, you haven't read the tweets? It was someone I know personally. And I said, think about it. Would you let a thousand people, would you sit in front of a thousand people and give each five minutes to come tell you about yourself and give them freedom to say anything about you? <laughs> From the most foulest, the most disgusting to the most amazing things. And would you give all thousand of them their five minutes? And wake up tomorrow and go to work and be fine. Yes or no? So if I can't do that in person, why should I do the exact same thing online? Because that's what you're doing. You're just yeah. reading people's opinions of you. And now it, it then it, 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 you're human and it affects your, your state of, of mind and state yeah. of being. Yeah. And that's what you need to take care of to be able to create, like yeah. you said. Of course, you need to, you, bro, like... You need to be free. Creating, bro, is very... is very Especially podcasting, because we don't really write questions down. We talk to people. Yeah. But we, we want to make sure as well. My process is making sure that I cover all the bases without over overly preparing, because I don't prepare. Yes. But I am aware what's happening around the person I'm talking to. Yeah. So I need to be like in an almost blank space like two hours before the interview, I need to not think about stupid bullshit. Yes. So don't bring it to me, you know? Yes. And also, if I was reading those comments, trust me, and like you're saying, I'm going to want to readjust what I said last week because I see that you guys are offended by it. You know what I'm saying? It might affect me doing today's podcast because of what I read as a reaction of last week's podcast. Mm. I literally have to be on a blank space um, blank canvas all the time when I'm about to create. You guys can consume it. And and the interesting thing is the punishment for us is that if we're shit, shit, really genuinely shit, we can be punished by people not watching anymore. And I take Ooh, that contract. That's the ultimate. That's I the take ultimate that contract. Punishment. Yeah. You know, I sign that contract with the, the with the consumer. Yeah. You can decide not to watch. And I'm not saying they must not watch. Mm. But if it's shit, shit, like genuinely shit, every, in, every interview is bullshit, I, I accept the contract that you guys can walk away. And that's it. But well, that's I, it. That's how you're gonna hurt someone if you really wanna hurt them. You know, so I right, bro, I don't I don't check out those things. Um I don't. When I trend, I if I've put up anything, I've learned not to because I know how it makes me feel and I try to protect my peace because I create from that blankness, yep. you know, I call it peace. I yeah. create from a peaceful, happy place. I don't create from an angry place. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to get worked up and get angry. <laughs> I don't need to tell someone, slap me! Yeah, yeah. What about a record? Yeah. You know what I mean? I create from from beauty, from laughs, from a peaceful space. 
So uh, I predict that at all. That's it's a currency to me. Peace is is a currency to me because I can create. I can do anything. You know when I'm at peace. Yeah. Um. An interesting one for you. Mm-hmm. Maybe you've not have time to conceptualize and internalize it. We as black men are loved only on the condition of provision. Oh yes, yes, definitely. What do you think of that? In in many cases, by society though, mm. you know, I, I don't think like you have a daughter, she'll love you no matter what. Yeah, you know, that kind of love is is is, is different. But Majita, yeah, because and also it's almost like I mean it's. I've heard this and I've heard it many times before, but who was it that said men are providers? It's us men, right? We created almost that rule. I don't think we were born and it was... Because you find in, in many animal uh, kingdoms, like lions, the females do the hunting, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, no one... You, you see, so with us, it was a whole thing of we kept on saying a man should provide, men are providers, I provide. We go out and do the hunting. You know, in many parts of the world, the women were prohibited from going out there and doing the hunting. So now it has come back to bite us. Um, a man is loved when he's... You, you see it when you hit on a woman. You know what I mean? Now it's different, I'm sure. And I'm sure you've also had... Absolutely. Because I'm sure growing up, you'd hit on girls. Well, girls wouldn't even look at you. Yeah. Right? Now you're you you, you, you you're doing amazing for yourself. You're successful. They'll look at you. Off of... You're providing, you're famous, and it's a sad reality, but we created it. Mm. And I think the more we raise a society and kids that believe in equality, I don't know what your opinions are on equality, then we'll have less of that. Mm. You know what I mean? A woman who gets hit on by a guy who has the brains, actually, is a decent human being, but may not have the car, may not have the money, may not even have the job. She can see beyond that because already she's providing for herself. You know, she doesn't need, she doesn't look at a man and smell bread, you know, or think she ought to be smelling bread. She sees a person and she sees a person she can coexist with, a person she can build with, a person who can help her, you know, make, carry this load called life. Uh, then but now so long as it's like if a nail sees a hammer that it's seeing something that's gonna come beat on it Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so when we condition people not to that everyone can provide Mm -hmm. everyone can you know be whoever they want there's no provisions that men are the sole providers then we're gonna have less of that and we can't have it both ways bro if we want to have a society where we say only men can provide, then guess what? The men who fail to provide, the men who are deemed as failures, will always be judged on that. They'll always be ridiculed of that. They'll always get uh, 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 the raw deal. They'll always not get the hardest goals. They'll always not get the respect. They'll always be voiceless in family meetings. Yeah. I think the the tragic thing about it is that um, we live in a society that wants equality but not the responsibilities that come with equality yes unfortunately yes you know because you can be a man who the condition is that in order for me to love you you must provide uh whereas the woman on the other hand has things right but what is expected from both of them are, are two different things yes you know we are held to a higher standard uh, when we are like what you went through with the LGBTQI community, is not the same thing that would have what that a, a female um, would have gone through. I would oh, argue no. it's not the same thing. Not on the same scale. Mm-hmm. Not gunning for his bread and not gunning for Meg G to dismiss you because you <laughs> lost a bag. No one was going to say if it was a woman that 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 that's what you must go through as mm. well. Now the idea of equality is pseudo. Is false. Is fake. Um, if people don't want to accept the responsibilities that comes with equality. You know, Nsiki Mazwai said something interesting last week, um, and she was not, and I, I, I hate cancelling people. I am against the cancelling of human beings. I am for the counselling of human beings, helping them out whenever they are. Nsiki said, um, paraphrasing her, she said, 
uh, gay men are not women. Oh, I saw that. I saw that last week. Hey, hey, take it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gay men are not women. And of course, there was a lot of um, brouhaha about that. Um, but uh, you would almost guarantee that if it was so Penduka, Meg, G, it would be a call for his counsel. Way more serious. It would be mm. way, way, way more serious. Yes. Let's go for his bread. Why do you think that that's the case though? Like, why is the first place is to gun for his bread? Anytime someone is in trouble for something, why is it that instinctively we go for their bread? Not not we, but these societies, that uh, these pressure groups, why do they go for the bread instead of counseling the person? I don't know, bro. Like, I, I, I seriously don't know. And look, even if they weren't to, to, to counsel a person, why can't you just say, oh shit, it's spewing shit on Twitter. Let's write to Twitter and, and close the account. No, right? but that's still archaic, bro. No, 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 no. But but what I'm saying is the bread has nothing to do with the utterances. Yeah, yeah. The, the platform the, has everything the platform. to do yeah, with them. It was done on the platform. It was made on the platform. Yeah. You get me? I'm not saying that's... I'm saying wow is that skipped and we go all the way to the bread. Mm. Right? Because I think people want to humble you. And they think the only way to humble you is seeing you broke. And broken. And broken. And because, especially with men, we live in the society, like you said, right, where we say men are sole providers. And one way to break a man is to take away his, 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 his allowance to provide, you know, is to take away his bread. You'll feel like nothing. You can't pay for your kids' school fees. You can't pay for your bond. Your car gets let go of. You need to start using public transport or Ubers or whatever. And a lot of... Also, 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 a lot of gents, also, and like people, humans, we attach so much of our image and respect to those things. Yeah. And so you may see it as a way of people stripping you from those things because they think you'll be humbled. Um, I still can't properly make the connection, you know, but isn't it a black thing though? Isn't it that whole, sometimes people do it in the hood for no reason. You didn't say anything controversial. <laughs> you didn't shit on anyone. But the day you have a car, people wish you fucking crash. <laughs> you know, those who believe in bewitching will will try, cook up their concoction, go see you, Babu Mglalose. They, you know. In, Shout out to Babu Mglalose if you exist. You know, it's wonderful. I don't know. I just said Mglalose, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You know, um, um, yeah. Don't we do that as black people? Because I don't live in, on white Twitter. I don't even know where to find white Twitter. I think we but inherited do, do, we we inherited those tactics from um, those feminist movements and LGBTQI movements, which are led primarily by white people. Um, it's something that I, I understand the element that you're describing in the township that that dynamic. But I yeah, think we, we hate success. We let's we, be honest, bro. I get that part. I'm, I'm just saying, like, that's not an exclusively black thing, this thing of cancelling people. Yes, yes, uh, yes. White people have a strategic way of moving. They know that to fuck you up, they need to take your bread away from you. And they started these groups, LGBTQI, um, these feminist movements, and, and they move strategically. And it was easy for us to embrace it. Yes. Because already we've got that, oh, by the way, he's rich, let's get him poor. Yep. Or he's earning a bit, let's, let, let's get him poor. So it was an easy sell. To black people, yeah. to be like, yo, whenever one fucks up, let's take away the bread. Let's. I remember, uh, I think on Twitter in South Africa it happened with this guy. He used to be a Twilib, like these big Twitter uh, celebrity, Twitter celebrities or Twitter accounts, and he was working for. Oh no 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 no! His was different. I think he hit someone. I think that's different. Though. He didn't just spew garbage. <laughs> oh no, him! I, yeah, Keep him, your hands to yourself. Him, yeah, him. Him was was different. He. It was. Keep your. How do you feel? Yourself. How? Yeah, it was probably warranted. You know what I mean? Because he literally was accused of assaulting someone. But he was the first case where they went to his job, and it was an investec uh, guy went to his LinkedIn and started calling and stuff. You know. But it's it's sad, especially in a country where there's so much poverty. Like you said, sixty percent. Yeah, I think over sixty percent. You know what I mean? People living. Uh, under with under three thousand rands yeah. of an income, 
and even five or six or seven thousand rand, guys, we know. You can you include them in the step. You can't have a decent life, you know. Yeah. Our parents managed with that, but let's be honest, you know. Um, it comes with hardship. So it's, it's sad to see that happen, especially for counselable things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Such as saying something out of ignorance. Yeah. Um, or just simply... That's that's what made me mad about bearing. your situation. That's what made me mad about your situation. I was like, nah, man, you can you can help him if you need to help him. I said even when I had a big closer on the last episode, um, I I said I I took him through all. Shout the, out to big closer. He's a chiller also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I took him through all the alphabets. I was like, L stands for this, G stands for this, and he didn't know. I was like, yo, this is what it all means. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't really have to affect your daily life, but at the very least, be aware that some of your fans mm. are gonna be members of that community. You don't have to be affected by it. You're not a gay man. You're not a lesbian woman. No. You know what I'm saying? But you can be counseled. You can be helped out to understand it better. It doesn't really... Like, on my day-to-day lived experience, it doesn't affect me. But I know I, I, I'm a content creator. And I will create content for people who are from that community. So at the least, the very least I can do is to understand what is L, what is, when Somizu says it's pansexual, what the fuck does that mean? And we educate just ourselves about that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And he said it on the show, actually. Can we talk yeah, about he, that? Somizu came out and said it, man. Somizu, uh, was it me? Yeah, it was me. I asked Somizu, I said, yo, bro. So the last time you had ass, like, uh, you, you had a woman. It was five years ago, no? It was like, was it fa- was no? I asked him the last time you had a woman. Was yeah. it when you were married or when you slept with your baby mama? Because mm-hmm. he's got a daughter, right? Yes, yes. And he was like, no way. It was five years ago. I was like, yes. whoa, you were clapping female cheeks <laughs> five years ago. He's like, yeah. And he said it's pansexual. Now I don't know the difference between your, that and yeah, bisexual, yeah. Though, but it's I guess it's he pans between the two. <laughs> no, you know when panning, right? Yeah, yeah, I get yeah you. between I the get two. You. Uh, 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 or multi uh, orientations, which is so, so cool. Because so I think it's it, bisexual would be specifically restricted to male and female. Yeah. So that means he can date a transgender man and a transgender woman. Maybe that's what he, he can date them too, including gays and lesbians. Yes. Hence, and I was female. like, yeah, it doesn't have to be like just two yeah, polar the, ends. It yes. could be everything else. Uh, Within the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why <not? laughs> Spectrum is very interesting because there's... The I reason, know, I know. There's, there's a rainbow, reason why there's, the a, colors, there's a plus. The color, and... the prism, the light, yeah. the color spectrum. Yeah. No. Hey, man, your mind is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Man. Yeah, man, I found that interesting, bro. Yeah. And, and it doesn't affect your day-to-day. I mean, I love females. No! It doesn't affect. It's just that you 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 cannot know the, the chess, the winner of a chess tournament from Finland and not know things that are closer to home. You can, but it's like, if you're curious to that level of knowing yes. things that are so far away from your country, yes. then at the very least with the people that you have to live with. And Simple, bro. Yeah, bro. Like, we were talking on the show about why... Uh, 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 um, so there's this guy who's running for the presidency in the US, or who wants to run, who's throwing his hat, his name in the hat. What's his name? I forgot him now. He was saying they want to revoke, you know, the right for gay marriages and some states, it was a mistake, Mm. shouldn't have happened. And my whole thing was, then we put it to the listeners and my whole stance was, it doesn't affect me. I mean, if two men want to get married and live happily ever after, are they going to kidnap my daughter? No. Are they going to break into my house? No. Are they going to... Possibly harm me one day that, ah, oh, we're men and frustrated. We're taking out our frustrations on you. So, you know. Yeah. So, why would I have a problem with that? You know what's interesting about that? Mm. The reason why it affects general white Americans is that they have a population crisis. Yes, a white population yes. crisis, specifically. They're not giving birth in sufficient numbers. But that's the for the abortion, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That, it's interlinked. Oh, it's so interlinked. It's, because when you're not procreating as gay men and and and, and lesbians, like when you make oh, you're so they want so they want guys to be gay but married and have kids for because they're supposed to be married to women. Yeah, because they so uh, they it, it's just, it, the, those two issues are interlinked, particularly as it relates to people who are pushing for the increased number of people being given birth to, particularly white people, because and it's also interlinked with the creation of a pseudo border in Mexico. Because at the rate at w- the rate at which Mexicans are entering America, it's crazy. right, is crazy, and they are also procreating when they are in America to a Whoa. point where 
America is not going to be ruled by typically white Americans in the next 40 to 50 years. And the complexion of even the color will change. Absolutely. The, the, there will be more mixed mixed race, race kids. kids. Absolutely. More black kids, yeah. right? Because, I mean, it's not a lot of black dudes marrying one another that side. Yeah. It's mostly the white guys, right? Yeah. So they, their concern is related to that, which is not the same thing as saying I endorse or I agree or disagree with them. Yes. I'm just breaking it down at that level that yes. their worry is always with regards to abortion. That's why they overturned something that has existed for like over 50 years, oh. which is the right for women to terminate if, if for, it's, it's their decision mm -hmm. to terminate if they want to, but they overturned it. Uh, something that's been there for over 50 years. And when you and people that analyze it say it's interlinked with their their problem of white genetic annihilation which they've always had a problem with in 1992 they were predicting that by 2050 there would be a, a serious problem now we're getting closer to 2050 mm -hmm. and they can see and the way that they see it is that if in 1992 there were maybe 9% black Americans. Mm. Now there's 18% black Americans between 18 to mm. 22. You know, they can see that there's been a doubling of the population of mm. black people in America. And now with the in influx of, of Mexicans and other foreign groups as well, they are aware that <laughs> unfortunately they're going to be in the minority in the next 50 years. It's crazy how the earth corrects itself because America was never white. Absolutely. Like, to begin with. In the first you know place. I mean? yeah. In the first place. Yeah. So it's beautiful to see. But you're right. And then Oaks take that kind of thinking. and But here they'll always, the guys will be like, nah, for... What social decay and more whatever, 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 whatever. I'm like, come on, guys. You know what I mean? Like, if something is not that's a that's a fallacy of an argument here in South Africa because yeah. you can almost guarantee, and this is a positive stereotype, but I don't like stereotypes. You can almost guarantee that you're not gonna be robbed by a gay guy. Uh, in most cases, you're not gonna be. Uh, yeah, 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 in most your, cases, in, in, in the majority of the time, a gay man is not gonna rob your house. A gay man is not going to hijack your car, mm -hmm. and so on. The crime is is predominantly the done. moral decay. Is yeah, really what they call a, a moral decay. Moral decay. decay yeah. It's 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 really a lot of times, you know, propagated by yeah. straight dudes. Yeah, by straight, particularly dudes. men. B straight straight men. Yeah. So you're right. Fallacy of an argument, bro. Like so, ah, man. Like me, if it doesn't affect me. Cool. And also, it's always good to understand shit first. And a lot of times, Oaks don't understand shit. And a lot of the guys, like you said, I don't, I don't know if this is what you said, but it, 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 I got that when you were talking to sure. because uh, it's Oaks seem to think if you have an understanding of the LGBTQI community, um, you're an ally. Some some tolerance and respect now nah, not even an ally you are now in the community Hi, you know? <laughs> what kind of ignorant like, bullshit is that yeah but also like that <laughs> but that's the thing right and, and i think a lot of times it's that fear i don't know man it's, it's it's a weird thing happening with really straight guys having it and a problem to the point that you think they invested in this whole thing you know you're like bro but just let people be man i mean you cool with your sexuality yeah, right? yeah, yeah. just let people be you yeah. know what I mean? But it's different. Are you a parent? I'm a parent. I'm a, it's a, diff I'm a, parent it's a different a daughter. question to confront. Like I've thought, how old is your daughter? She's four. Mine is 10. It's a different question to confront when she's coming with those news to you. There's nothing you can do. You're not going to kill her. You're not going to disown her. When, well, when but, they come and... But when yeah, they when they out. disclose... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've thought about that too. I'm like, shit. I'm not gonna, I can't do anything. I can't disown it. It's not like I'm, that's the first thing in my mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I can't, I'm thinking, I, oh shit, that's really what you want to do. No, that's not the first <laughs> thing on my mind. It's like, I'm going to be like, uh, well, nigga, fuck you, but okay. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's nothing you can do, but other parents do. But like, don't you think, though, us now going through the, you know, all the letters in the LGBTQI, plus, yeah. and what they stand for and what the plus stands for. Um, don't you think you will be then more understanding of your daughter coming out? I would be accepting and loving, mm -hmm. but I don't want that to happen. So you can hold those two views at the yes, same time. Yes, yes, I yes. don't want that to happen. Like, I don't want my child to come out as a lesbian woman. Or a yeah, just like maybe you don't want your kid to be a cop. Of course. Right? 
I don't want my kid to be a police officer. I'd rather they be a lawyer. But if they told me that, Dad, I want to be a cop, then I'd be like, wow. Well done. Yeah, whatever. It's, your, yeah, you, it's your career. So you love it? Yeah. yeah. Be happy. <laughs> yeah, well, right? the, there's nothing much you can do. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a predicament. And also, but, sometimes it's not even them wanting to be. Because people don't say, I want to be gay one day. Yeah. Right? I'm assuming from what I've read and the conversations I've had, people always know it's like with trans people you know sure. what i mean they, they they've always identified as a different you know so when your child comes and says i've been holding this in for a while what else can you do but love them and be like cool yeah that's what and i'm that, saying and like, that's the ultimate test eh? yeah yeah that's well, what i'm saying it's it's easier for us to discuss it to be uh, all, yeah yeah all. but but if it affects you yes. particularly if it's your son at some point you're gonna have a son i might have yes. a son as well and, and we are men i'm saying this because we are men yes. um and 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 it's a it's a predicament to confront there's no decision to be made mm. he's gay your son is gay there's no he's decision gay. to be made he's gay yeah, you're gay. Uh-huh. Like, you're gay. <laughs> why are you yeah. gay no. <laughs> are you gay <laughs> That was one of yeah. the most epic interviews ever in the world. It's funny and as offensive as it is, I always prayed that the LGBTQI community can see. Have you seen that interview? Why yeah, are but you it's there? happening like long time ago. Long time Rwanda or, or Uganda. But Uganda, Uganda, yeah. I think yeah. it sounds Uganda. But it's the most I'm like, I pray that LGBTQI community can have the sense of humor to know that this shit is just funny. You know, but of mm. course, the lived experience of Pepe and other people in yeah, Uganda yes, is, is 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 more of a traumatic experience. But I'm just saying the, that yes, that interview is yes. super, super, super funny. You know, you, you see, like I like when you said the lived experience because this is what I learned from this thing you know, that we had there. You know, it's 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 like it's like saying to a Jew, "Hey, bro, you want to hear this this anti-Semitic joke?" Right, it's really funny. I know your lived experiences as a, <laughs> as a Jew. I know what Holocaust is, what you all went through, but it's really funny. It's almost a bit difficult for them to find the humor in it, yeah. which I get now, especially with the Manchester thing. That's I was like, oh, okay, but you realize it didn't come from a place of hate. Yeah. They're like, yes, but our lived experience, we can't laugh at anything. Yeah. That's you know what I mean. Then I'm like, Ooh. you and I are black, people but I'm black. In South we can and I we laugh, laugh at ourselves. I laugh even at some jokes. Laugh I really at laugh at. We laugh. That's why I like yes. my gripe is let Dave Chappelle speak and ha- and make jokes because yes. if you're gonna limit what what he jokes about, mm. you're then gonna have to say he must not joke about black people, oh, he must not joke yes. about white people. Because right? yes. you yes. know we laugh at ourselves, we see ourselves being poked fun at by Dave Chappelle. I think 15 to 18 years ago when I was a teenager, mm. he was joking about a baby coming out of the ass of a black woman from the hood and is a small baby and it's 3 a.m. in the morning. And it's like, yo, if you want to take offense, you can take offense. But that's a fucking funny, untrue scenario. Bro. You know what I'm saying? But you laugh at yourself with those jokes. Even white people, when they, you know, joke about black, like, uh, I was at the Rose of Kanyemba and John Flissmas, you know? <laughs> so all these jokes, and there was a fine line we were skating on, but yes. the people still found the humor. And the line must be there. The line the must line be there. It there. helps you. It helps you as a creative, bro. Yes. You know that there is a line. Mm-hmm. You know when you are being malicious against jewish people or lgbtqi yes communities. you know that okay, this is malicious you know and but you, you you must you must you must dance next to that line mm, so in order for it to be so dope you must dance next yes, to it. it's there it's that's fair. why i said to you in, in our conversation here that offense is important mm. it is important whatever the fuck you say people must feel one way or the other yeah yeah, yeah 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 not be yeah, on, on, on on the fence because you can tell when someone is pussyfooting around something. All right. Let's wrap it up, my nigga. Um, for you, radio is a space that you're going into full-time now? Um, or you're just going going along with it? You're enjoying the experience? Yeah. Or you're going back as a radio practitioner? Like, you're like, okay. Because the radio is a cycle, right? Every year, we renew contracts. Every year, we, mm-hmm. there are very few privileged people who get five-year deals on radio. Mm-hmm. Um, there's very few. Uh, most of the time, people in April they renew contracts. I think Kaya has a different cycle. Uh, oh, it's three. I don't know about the rest of the station because I haven't seen people's contracts. For you, it's but three also, years. I believe that yeah, because of the belief that you're you need, very privileged. You need a while to to build a show. You're very privileged. So they're in it for the long haul. It's it's three years, but um, I'm a person who loves experiencing things and I love experiences. I'm curious and. A lot of times if you say, so let's try this, I'll do it. 
you know, and if it's working, we carry on doing it. And I mean, guys like Charlemagne have shown that you can do both. Oh yes, you know, yes. you can do yes. both podcasting. Could you do that? Could you TV, do? Could you be on radio. a different? Uh, could you do? Because I thought about this as I knew that we were going to talk. Could you do like? Because Charlemagne is on different podcasts. Do you think? Because I know, I I notice numbers, and I'm a numbers person, and I know every time you speak to someone, there's fifty thousand human beings there to watch and above. It's usually not less than fifty thousand. No, 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 definitely. You know what I'm saying? So I, as I was internalizing this, I was like, Yo, I need to ask you whether or not there will be a soul penduka, whatever, whether you're cracking jokes or whatever the fuck, like a YouTube channel in your name, which yes. is not directly competing with Max G, yes, yes, but yes. but but whatever you're doing, a different style. Yes, type. yes, definitely. Like you just said, like Charlemagne would do, well, the Breakfast Club is almost like a podcast now. Yeah. And then, and then there's, flagrant. There's, yes, exactly. Right. Is it brilliant idiots or flagrant? Not it's idiots. Yeah. And then there's um no I think it's a TV show, uh, but like there's 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 if it's not competing yeah, definitely and they will be definitely the stuff I'm working on by myself. Not in competition in, in I'd love any to see way. It. I'd love to see. Um, it. Yeah, you'll ch- you, you'll see. You'll you want to talk to people, or are you you still conceptualizing what kind of content do you want to do? Interview ish type of thing or part of, part of it will be interview, but not like podcasts interview. But part of it, uh, there will be an interview segment to it. All right, please invite me there whenever you. Ah, coolies. Ah, definitely. Please bro. invite me. I will, man. I love your mind. You know, you can tell when you watch a person like. The guy knows what he's about and what he's talking about. Man. Yeah, I said that to Peno when I spoke to him on That's a, f- Penel, a, f- a few a few days ago. He's brilliant. Yeah, Peno is brilliant. And man. I said, look, because he has the Peno show now, um, and I was like, yo, if I can do anything to help you by being present there and sharing the content with my audience, um, I can do that. Let me know anytime. We need that, bro, especially in our space. You know, yep. there's not many of us, like you said, with loggerheads uh, with mainstream a lot of times. Um, those that get it, like Akaya, will want to, you know, tap into the pool of talent that podcasting has. And as that podcasting grow, they grow not just by virtue of that. Also, if I mean, I know what I'm doing and right. They also then get to enjoy, you know, uh, the talent being on the platforms. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be like, yeah, you must only be on one platform. You know, so we move with those who get it. Uh, but we really need to. To, to bind together, you know? Yeah. Um, as, Do you have as, the, the, as the other guys. There's one other thing, though, about that that I'm noticing. Mm. So, Nsiki has Unpopular Opinion podcast, right? Oh, yeah. Have Shout you out seen to Nsiki. It? How um, is it? Have you, have you seen I it? I saw two episodes, but 10 minutes in, like 10 minutes, because I, I observe things. I don't really watch. I, I watch the the things that I watch, mm. and then I observe other things. Like, okay, you, what is this about? What is this about? You give it a chance. Yeah, like you, mm. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So, I, I watched her with Mkulun Singh a for 30 minutes and then I watched another one for 10 minutes mm. and I bring that up to say that what I'm noticing although I don't know empirically what's happening here but I'm noticing that people are proposing podcasts to personalities like yourselves to say so let's say a bunch of dudes that have a studio mm. um, they say come and do the podcast now you you agree to it because they see the vision in you and, and, and the greatness that you, you, you exude and they know that they will, they will have the numbers I think what I'm foreseeing, I think even with the panel show, panel has a YouTube channel called Panel the Black Pen. And I, I, I empirically know that that's his, um, that's his podcast, right? Mm. Now, with the panel show that it, it's on episode number two, my worry is that I think there's a bunch of dudes that say, come and do this podcast in this space. And I think there's going to be an ownership problem somewhere down the line. Panel? Um, the panel show, not of all people, not not Penwell, the Black Pen. He's that's his own YouTube channel. Okay, but well, I see that there's I, another one. There's another one called the panel, the show, panel show, and I see that that's probably other people's equipment and, and like whatever. Tart, yes. Yeah, yeah, and and also even on Sikin, I I see that maybe someone else owns the equipment and owns the 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 cameras and shit and the lights. The means to production, absolutely. So yeah. I, I I'm foreseeing. I don't know this empirically, but I'm just saying even with you as you walk into that space. You'd rather have your own cameras. No, no, rather, own thing, bro. Oh, I hope, bro. And, and, and let own it be thing. in your own name. Control. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ownership, man. Control ownership. If you're going to do something like that, and I think there's been so many examples of, 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 of us, you, you know, that you got to own the means of production. You know, your own place. If you don't have three cameras, just grab your phone. 
you get me? But just own because then you're able to and don't sell your shit. Don't sign things and then you you allow people to be able to exploit your works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um and allow people to have a say in what you what you do and what you say. And I am noticing that influx of 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 big corporations into podcasting. I mean, Netflix has their own podcast now, right? <laughs> yes, I think I've so I've seen uh, maybe Celeste and Dooley being part of that, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they will never do it like us because we talk shit. Yeah, they will never ever you see, ever ever. I, I get you know why you know why right? They are coming because of remember what I said earlier on. Big corporations want to come to you know to Nkulego and Seoul. Because the numbers are there, but fuck, these guys can say anything. And we can't now, when 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 it gets hot in the kitchen, we, we will not stand by their side, yeah. right? But we want those numbers. So they think by starting these podcasts, they'll get the same numbers, but by not allowing their people to be authentic and genuine yeah. and say what the fuck they want to say. There you go. Your driver's here? Yeah? Your driver's here? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, we'll there you go. No, no, no. Let's, let's not make him wait. We've spoken for two hours. Okay. I appreciate it, bro. Shit, it's been two hours. Yes, it's been nah, two man, hours. Nah, man, love, you, love, you, love your work, man. Love your work and your Thank outlook, you, you know? On Thank you. Things, bro, if you need me on content, so on content, if you need me, let me know. I'll come to your... I, I go to any, no matter how small pod, the, the platform is. For real. You know, because the mm. thing is, my work relies on people coming on my po- platform. Yes. So, now nah, I, mean, I have to you do You know that. the importance of it, right? Yeah, but... Yeah, so it's almost to a fault. I don't say no to any invitation, except yeah. for paid invitations. I don't do paid work. Like I like uh, working here and it is key, and those are the hours that I give. Mm. But it, for like podcast and talking shit, people want to interview me or whatever. If we talk about topics, we'll do that. Um, you know, so if you start that shit, let me know, bro. And we'll do, fam. Yeah. We'll do. We'll um, do. thank you so much for being here. Nah, thank you, bro. Thank, thank you, you niggas, for watching us. Hey, hey, Hey. hey. <laughs>